All right, we are rolling on this side. Andrew, cue us down for this new okay. Slice of Life podcast. Three, two, one. All right, guys, welcome back to what was previously known as Johnny Reviews. Now is the new and improved The Slice of Life podcast. That looks so it makes clean. yes, man. I know, guys. I wanted to change the name up. It, it for me, it works. We're slicing up lives, and today's life that we're slicing up is Mitch O'May. Mitch O'May. Look at the camera real quick, man, just to let everybody know how your face looks. You know, this for the people that are audio, you can't see his face, but <laughs> it's whatever. Mitch, how are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. And it does look clean and crisp, man. I, I was like, is this a professional background? Like, what? Bro, like, I, <laughs> I, made it, I made it in like hours. <laughs> That's awesome. That's <laughs> like, awesome. I was I like, like I was like, I need a world landscape. I was like, this is good. I could talk about anything and everything. And this is what uh, my podcast is known for. It's Hell just yeah. A bunch of shit. But dude, how are you, man? How's, I'm good, how's, man. How's Life has been 2020, you know? Dude. Okay. Another day. We're going to get into that. Dude. We're going to get into almost a lot of that. There was no... So much. There was no barrier to this. I'm glad that we, we decided on getting some whiskey and yes. some uh, Cheers. a little bit of Coke. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Oh, man, but this new setup is clean. I love it. It kind of like it really reminds me of a of a, re- a really professional podcast, and that's what I want people to come on and feel mm-hmm. like that environment is there. Yeah, for, for sure. But dude, tell me, tell the audience about yourself, man. I want like I know you. Yeah. Tell tell the audience about yeah, you. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm an ex Disney cast member, like most of your friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, come from Indiana. Went to school in Kentucky. Um, I love. Everything Marvel, DC, comics. One of my passions is uh, skiing. Lived in Denver, Colorado for like three months. That was cool. That's new. I've been all over the place, man. In the past year, I moved from Indiana to Colorado. Then, no, sorry, sorry. Back, backtrack. Florida to Indiana, then to Colorado, then back to Florida, and then 2020 hit. <laughs> what do you think about? <laughs> what do you think about 2020, man? Like, well, did you see? Do you, you have TikTok, right? I, Yes. Bro, like two days ago, I woke up to, well, I went to bed scrolling 3 a.m., ran into three UFO videos in a oh, row. Oh, like, I in saw a row. Did you see new, that? Those new videos that came Dude. out of, um, fuck, uh, fuck, is it in the, it, there was one in the mountains. Like, I saw that one, the yeah. one that, was it the, well, NASA, I think. The, one was in Boston. Boston. Yeah. I like, remember that this one. This happened just a few just, days just ago. Just a few days ago. And then I woke up the next day and this girl was like, did we get attacked by aliens and no <laughs> one's talking about it? And she showed like six videos of like all the same day. That, that's TikTok for me. I just know it, it's conspiracy main heaven for people. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. People, oh yeah. You know, yeah. like I, I, when I go on there and I see everything that is on there now, like anything that you want to talk about, anything that you could find, you want to find it is on TikTok. Oh yeah. And I, when I saw those videos, dude, I was freaking out. I was like, listen, I have my own thoughts on, on aliens and, yeah. and you know, <laughs> like we haven't really touched on that. I like, there's some people that do want to touch on it, but then I'm just like, how much do you want to touch on it? Like, you know, and it's just like, it's, and it's crazy, man. It's crazy mm-hmm. for me. How, how big TikTok got mm-hmm. like that is, it's like a new Google. Like it's my favorite me. app. Is it? It's my favorite. I think it's better. Well, YouTube's up there. Of course, YouTube love, will have YouTube. a special place in my heart. Yeah. Because yeah, I grew up watching YouTube. But mm-hmm. TikTok, man, I watch it for hours. And then I get sucked in. Like, I have ADHD, so I get sucked, sucked in really bad. In. Dude, <clears throat> when I tell you, TikTok, I love that app. But did you see they got bought? Oh, did they finally? Yeah, get they bought? finally got bought. So it's official. It's, 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 it's uh, Microsoft or no? I don't think it's Microsoft. It's uh, it's. I didn't hear that. I don't know the re- company. Like I didn't recognize the name. Like I, somebody bought it and I didn't recognize the name. So it, but is it USA? Like a US company? I think so. Yeah. Somebody Man, tweeted about it. F- dude, if it's if it's if that's true, and I mean I should Google it. Yeah. You know, if that's true, I, I well I never thought TikTok was gonna go away. Like everybody that thought that it was it was like oh it's gonna be banned. I was like, dude, it's way too big to be banned. Like mm-hmm. there is no possible way TikTok is going to leave like that is in our lives for the rest of like Google and I think everything else. We all had the PTSD from Vine though. When Vine disappeared, oh, dude, man. we did all Did you have Vine? Yeah. Did you did you yeah, make of course, Vines? Yeah, I did. We could I could oh my god. Dude, I, did, I I never made Vines. Bro. I made a lot of Vines. Oh, I made shit. one time I made 100 Vines in 10 days. <laughs> I was suspended for school for 10 days and I made 100 Vines. <laughs> I swear yeah. to god. In no. high school, I swear. <laughs> 
bro, that is crazy. I, that is addiction right there, man. Well, I went a little off the. Well, okay, you know, uh, were you trying to get? We're trying to get well, big. You know, or you you know Chance the Rapper. Yeah. You know, in one of his songs, Ten Day, he said, "I made it." Uh, or he said I was uh, suspended for a hundred hours, ten days, or something, and I was like, I made a hundred vines in ten days, or something. Like, it, and yeah, I was just like, I don't yeah. know, and felt inspired as a kid. Oh my god! Did you, I was 13, a weird, fourteen year old you. Is just no, dude, I, this like, was like seventeen, eighteen, dude. I was oh, like, like, I thought I was gonna be a rapper. My oh, nickname what, in high school was Wooly Mammoth. I, can you still rap? Can you? Still not, rap? not really. I'm bad at it. I'm like one of those people that like is like sus rap. Like they'll start like just saying some like, t- some, like some yeah. random shit. Yeah, like and I'm like, dude, like, you just like, why'd you say that? Hey, man, you'd, <laughs> you'd kill it at a poetry slam. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've never tried poetry, but oh man, I, I, I don't know. I did. I, I don't know why I ever like. I went to one little poetry slam and I was just like, oh, okay, I can see why people. One time I tried stand up. Oh, in Colorado. no way, no yeah. way. How did yeah. that go? I'm, uh, I'm very intrigued on that one. Uh, I bombed three times, I think. Uh, well, okay, one time it was a really small, intimate bar, and it was known for comedy in, in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. And the people took it serious, and I got there, I was like, oh shit, these people take it serious. Like people have like notepads, they're like looking at their jokes, and I'm just like, I'm just telling stories and right. doing like impressions. Right. So, and it was like 1 a.m. by the time they finally called me on stage. So I was already hammered, drunk as shit. Uh-huh. And, um, and then, yeah, and uh, I, I bombed. And then I went up a few weeks later, tried again, did a little bit better, got more laughs, but whew, they, tough crowd, dude. Bro, I, I, I one props. Like, yeah. I, I don't know <laughs> if I could ever, I would try it, just, but I know, I would, I would know what makes me laugh. I don't. I don't know if that would make other people laugh. Exactly. It, you never know. No, but man, man, it's just who I don't. I don't know who said it, but um, now I don't know if it's a good time to be a comedian. Like maybe back then, maybe. But you I know. think now is the best time. I don't know. It's a weird time to be a comedian because you know, with like the whole cancel culture and everything, That's like people I mean, getting man. yeah, people getting That's called I mean. out. But some people say like screw it like i'm just gonna be the funniest i can like there was some people that like i've been canceled like do you think it is it like on a different platform or is it is it like youtube youtube still it it wouldn't be stand-up anymore it would just be like a different way to do andrew schultz have you seen his little videos and stuff like that i think so yeah how he adapted into like these four or five minute videos yeah yeah like like, that's he doesn't care like that dude that dude is like He's he's funny. I think he's. Hilarious. Who's the guy who did like uh, the shark party? Ah, <sighs> he was the guy that's yes. like uh, Anthony Jesselnick. Was that him? I was gonna say Anthony. Borden. Anthony, it's Anthony something. Anthony oh, Jesselnick. Anthony I think that's his name. Like that. Oh my god. Uh oh. I am watching too much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he um, he was like the first controversial comedian not i shouldn't say first but he was the big guy that was just like i'm allowed to be offensive like what made yes. him what made him uh famous i guess uh, he was already a little bit famous but what made him really famous was after 9 11 he or sorry sorry after the aurora uh shooting in colorado uh-huh. he tweeted other than that how was the movie <laughs> and everyone was like what look uh, uh, look man i give people props that that can not give a fuck yeah like yeah, you know yeah, like yeah, yeah. not those people i i envy and i'm just like how do you do it man like i yeah. i, I want to get to that point and uh, like for for comedy even like i just i just think that it takes a special person to do comedy man oh, I, I say the same, i said i said the same thing about like podcasting for vloggers mm-hmm. like you man mm-hmm. you, you're a vlogger yeah i cannot do that like yeah i am more better at this then mm-hmm. I feel like I would be as a vlogger. So you got to find your niche. Like, 100%, 100%. Like I started off with more vlog style. My videos were long. Like I'm talking 14, 15 minutes long. And then I was like, no, I don't even want to watch this. Why am I doing this when I don't even want to watch it? Exactly. So then I started making short. Like one of my best videos on YouTube is literally less than two minutes. And it's just talking about Tron construction. That's it. Like that's what that's people weird. want. That's what people want to hear. Like a two minute video, just you, you like talking about the new Tron roller coaster at Disney. <laughs> mine, mine was a... Mine was a transformation video. It was a six month. It was like a four minute long. Uh, I did intermittent fasting. I was fat. And oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So yes. I just, that was like three thousand views. But I, I just know like people want to see like, oh, okay, he probably looks different. Ah, he probably doesn't look different. They just want to like, they just yeah, want yeah, to yeah. But whenever I try, I tried it, man. I tried vlogging. I couldn't do it, man. I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, 
this is weird. Like, I just know it takes a special person to do it. Mm-hmm. So this is why I'm saying, like, for for if you if you can give someone advice on that, like, how would you? What would you say? Because you, I would, vlog. Yeah, like I think you're. I think you're. A, like, I think vlogging specifically, you have to start off. Like I said, I thought it the longer the video, the better. Like the more content, the better. Right. It's the opposite. Less than four minutes is key. If you look at all of David Ulbricht's videos, they're all less than four minutes. They're four minutes twenty seconds, yes. pretty much always. And that's because the longer people can watch your video, the more views you're going to get. So if you get 50% of your video watched, the more views you're going to get because the algorithm is going to think that you're doing good. So so it, it depends on the short. Like, it has to be short. Oh, yes, unless you're just making an amazing movie. Like, did you... Dude, I saw Chase's last video. Yes. Dude, that was amazing. Fire. Yes, and, and that that's allowed to be more than one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. And that's another. He's going to be like another uh, a special guest on mine, and I will like. He's going to talk about videography dude, and how like beautiful all video. Dude, he is a talented guy. Yes. Like no matter what, like uh, he whenever he said he was down, I was like, yeah, man, you can talk. We was like, dude, we can talk about movies. Yeah, dude, we can talk about movies. Dude, he's I, like, yes. I'm so down, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm so glad I finally got a panel right here so we can actually talk about that stuff. But you're not wrong, man. Like, mm-hmm. like it's. I, I think once you find your niche, like you, you can kind of like, oh man, you can really work on it and stuff like that. But uh, you, I, I, do you feel like you found your niche or do you feel like yeah you, i definitely like, feel like i found my niche well i want to do more so i kind of want to change my niche but i got to get more views doing the thing that i know how to do best mm. and then i can kind of slide my niche over a little bit what do you what do you, um, you trying to transition so i you know i love marvel and dc and comics so I, that's what and harry potter I i'm a huge him. nerd dude huge nerd and i love all that stuff and i love disney don't get me wrong but there's only so much you can do with Disney and how much you can talk about it. Yes. And I'm like, there's a thing called the Disney bubble. Man. Exactly. And dude. if you're in that Disney bubble, you are trapped with how much you can't talk about yeah. what you want to talk about. And you're going to limit yourself. I'm guilty as charged. Like I'm, I'm in the Disney bubble too. I mean, it's oh, easy. Dude, Disney gets views. You live here, bro. Yeah, yes. we live here. Like, look at us. We live here. Yeah. Disney gets you views. So that's, yes. that's the number one thing. But yeah, it's, um, like and it, it, the other thing about advice to anyone starting like a podcast or any like type of YouTube channel, be confident with yourself, 100%. dude. Like don't shy away. You're going to have so many people that are going to tell you, why are you doing why that? Are you doing or why, wh- what are you doing? Or they might be like, oh yeah, dude, good job. Like try to act like they're interested, but yeah. they're really not. Screw those people. Yeah. Fuck, fuck them, dude. Like do what you, makes you happy, exactly. right? Do what makes you happy. And as long as you still are doing your things, you can pay your bills and have a part-time job or whatever, like do what makes you happy. happy. Yeah. I agree, man. I, I definitely agree. Uh, dude, COVID. And, and this is why this is a good transitioning point to that is just like, like we are trying to find things that can definitely make us happy. And COVID just kind of like fucked that shit up so badly, man. We were just like, we were in this bubble doing so well and people just went into like a, like a depressed mode, but dude, Yes, I was doing so good. Like speaking of intermittent fasting, yeah. I was doing that. Before, oh, you were? Yeah, before COVID. Look at that. And then COVID. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I lost like forty-five pounds doing that, dude. And sometimes you don't even know that you're doing it, but it's just like maybe mm-hmm. it's like it's like, I, dude, I don't like eating in the morning. Was, I don't know if that's yeah, weird. Me, me too. And for me, I just I was like, I honestly, I would eat later on. I had I'll have a coffee or like tea or mm-hmm. something like at eleven. Yep. That's it. That's yep. it. After that, I'll have like one or two meals like mm-hmm. at four or five and I'm, I'm good. You know, what's helped me lose a lot of weight what? and any, I'm all, I'm so confident with this. I'm not even joking. I'm so confident. Whiskey? Well, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. That will, that will, if you stick to the liquor instead of the beer, the beer gets you <laughs> and the white claws, the, those pack on pounds for sure. Dude, the calories in the soda right uh, now is just what's killing me. But, it, good. but the, uh, <laughs> the one thing I swear by, if you're trying to lose weight, I don't care who you are. But if you go three days, no sugar, no carbs, so hard to do. And it's even harder if you're vegetarian. Are you vegetarian? No, I'm not. Oh, shit. I was about to say. It's even harder if you're vegetarian or anything like that because my meals were just steak. That's it. Steak and cheese. It's almost keto. That's like almost carnivore diet. Have you heard of that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I got the idea from Joe Rogan because he talked about it. And um, yeah, no uh, no sugar and uh, no... uh, like no pasta, no um, like heavy stuff with with carbs. Yes, you'll lose like twenty pounds 100%. within like three days. Um, man, how do I say this? Um, have you ever heard of carb cycling? Mm, no. So it's essentially like what you're saying is to not like eat carbs or sugar for like three days or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like a discipline that comes with that, and it comes with like intermittent fasting. But um, carbs, I 
whenever I was looking into the keto diet, I was doing like, I'll, I'll, I was, I was a health nut back in like 2018, man. Yeah. Uh, but once I got into like a little bit closer, it's, it's hard to like, um, quit something cold Turkey and people, people that end up doing that always fail. Like they always fail. If they like, I'm yep. done, I'm, I'm not going to drink anymore for blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> that's going to go through it. So I found out about carb cycling and I did the same thing with sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, not like on not natural sugars, but like, uh, processed sugars like the yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, there, there's an addiction with, uh, people, I don't know, with people that actually want to, they, they, we consume too much sugar, man. Like for we, sure. for 100%. Uh, as Americans, we yes. consume like so much man it's in everything it's in everything literally everything oh my gosh man um and because of that it's it's weird how how we we will i don't know we'll trick our brains into like saying like oh no we're good we're good i, I don't know man i it, for me it kind of like it, it depends on the person and mm-hmm. it depends on the di- how how much discipline do you have and i'll say that about anything mm-hmm. man like if your financials aren't good man like discipline your financials like discipline your your any anything you want to do in life like that's that's the thing like, hum, like i feel like humans in general are so guilty like we are so guilty of just being like like you know, I'll go three or four days. Oh. I went really, I went like four days without sugar or like even caffeine. Really, I mean, I've had, I've had a little bit of coffee, like one coffee yeah, in the caffeine, morning. Caffeine's a big. Caffeine's thing, a man. huge one. It and America. Right? After the third day, after you get over the third day of no sugar, you look amazing. I look the young. I look ten years younger. No joke. Dude, like you, your 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 exactly. skin is glowing. Everything and is uh, glowing. of course, I could have kept going. Like oh yeah, I could keep going. Like it's after the third day, you're like I could keep going forever. I don't I, I don't need sugar anymore. Right. But then you're like. I could really use like a Coke or something. Like you're like, I could really it's use like, like, like a Coke. Brian's like, man, Come can on. I, 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 how, old, how old am I? I won't die until like I'm exactly. 60. And we're young. Dude, we're young. Yeah. It, so we're young and it does, it does us no favors because we're like, ah, Come on, I'm not in my 40s. Like I can, I could be eating bad if I want. To. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and it's like that guilt trip that we're like, exactly. Like you know, you want to do good. You want to succeed. You want to make a. I don't know if that's your goal. Like to make a boatload of money, do all, all this other exactly. stuff. And at the end of the day, it's kind of like, you know, what do you want to do? Like what, what, what Dude, fulfills you, man? I was thinking about this the other day. Manifestation is a hundred percent real. Like if you manifest something to happen in your life, you could say like, I want to lose 40 pounds or like, yeah. I want to lose 50 or whatever it is. Or I want to become like a musician. I want to actually like go to, I want to sell out seats or be a stand up comedian, right. sell, sell out. Yes. You make a goal and you put your mind to it. You manifest it. You think like, I will do this. I like, you, there's no other way. I will do this. It'll happen. Like a hundred percent. So many of the greatest comedians and movie stars and musicians say, I just manifest. I just thought about it. Like uh, Jim Carrey's big on this. He has. He, yes. Have you seen him? The te- well, the ten million dollars. How like the he, yeah. he wrote a check to he himself. Man- he manifested. Yes, that. I, I dude. I see. I see what you're. You're an inspirational guy, man. Thank I. You. I one. I'm upset right now that my camera just ran out of battery. So I'm gonna have to. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Tra- no. I'm gonna have to transition to my phone. Okay. You're good. Tell the audience right now while I'm doing this. Tell the audience right now what are some key things that they need to do to actually want to succeed. Like I, for me, not that I'm successful, but it doesn't matter. I, I feel like one, everything you just said, man, is very, is very inspirational. If you can help one person, you're an inspirational guy. Like, I Thank think you. that's right there. Thank you. So for, for people that are wanting to do what you do or wanting to be in the, in, in, in a situation that you're in, what do they have to do? Thank you. Well, that's a, it's a hard one. And it's a, like I said, not that I am a successful guy, but I mean, I have, like, I have been successful and I'm too hard on myself at a lot of times in my life. Like, I, you know, I graduated college, never thought I would do that. Um, but when you just literally don't be, feel sorry for yourself, like I know people say it all the time, do not feel sorry for yourself. When you wake up and you're like, Oh, I feel, I feel like shit today. And I, you know, I, if only I just ran or hit the gym or, you know, if only I didn't eat McDonald's last night. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Just be like, why? Like, why did I do that? Like, I am better than that. And I know I'm better than that. And I'm just being, it's like the, like Joe Rogan says, it's the little bitch inside me in the morning. And you just got to get over that. And you're just like, don't like, don't feel sorry for yourself. Like, yes, you can change. Like, like I used to look at myself and be like, I'm so fat. Like, why was I dealt the shorthand in life? Like, why is my metabolism so bad? Don't do that. Don't, don't wake up and think like that. Wake up and be like, bro. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, to the, go, I'm gonna to go to the gym. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the gym today, bro. Uh, okay, so the, I I don't know, man. Uh, today's culture is it, it is flabbergasting me. Like it, I I'm 
there's a lot of things right now I just I, I would love to talk about. Um, but no, you bring up a lot of good points that has to do with a lot of success and successful people, and it has to do with the idea of uh, of those, those key things mm-hmm. you you can implement on any aspect of your life, and one hundred percent, it'd be you'd be successful, man. Yep. Um, and, and it's it's a thing. Like, why why is it so difficult? Why why is it for for like a hundred for for a lot of Americans they want to get into this realm right now, but they why is it so difficult? Like, what do you think are some factors? self like self doubt and failure like failure like being scared of failure is the biggest thing i think most americans if you would like really sit down and talk to them like mm-hmm. why, why don't you why don't you do your pursue your dreams they don't want to fail and a lot of people a lot of successful people say i love failure right i lo- i strive to fail i can't remember what comedian it was but uh, there was this comedian he said i love failure i look to fail every day because if i'm not failing i'm not if, i'm not trying yeah if you're not trying you're not failing like if I don't know if that made sense. But no, no, no. You, it, you makes I mean? it makes sense. It makes sense. Keep going. Exactly. Because I yeah. feel like you're going, you're getting somewhere. But have you ever failed, man? Have you ever, you know, one hundred percent. How does that feel? Like, let me what, just tell you this. Oh man, like, go ahead. I'll tell you my story. So this is the biggest quote unquote failure of my life. I'm sure I've had a lot more. Mm. I well, I shouldn't say failure because the first part was not a failure. But I did not go to my middle school graduation. But that was actually a success because I was actually doing something productive. Yeah, did not go to my middle school graduation, but I failed, like got suspended. I told you, yeah, for my high school graduation, did not go to that. <laughs> and then I succeeded to go to my college graduation. Yeah. Almost was too hungover to go, but I went to my college graduation. But not going to two of the great, and I don't have a preschool graduation. I didn't do any of it. I didn't. I only had one graduation in my class, like. That's kind of crazy to think about. Like most people have three, maybe four. Some people even have like five or six. Some people have graduations from first grade to second. I only had one in my entire life. I think that's a little bit of a failure. Like it kind of like I Bro, look at it as a failure. I, I okay. I, I can see where you're coming from. I can see I can see that perspective. I I can I I, um, I mean I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if like like you know like um but I don't know, man. I I do think. As a as a young kid, yeah, that can affect something. Like if you're not if you if you don't feel successful in yourself, like people, people are, like even our, your surroundings, there is just like. But at a young age, I think you should also experience failure. That is true. And and uh, like I think you you you've experienced that. So mm-hmm. it's from that I think. Oh my God, I I don't know, man. It's it's a demasculating thing even now. Like if you fail now, like you're just like, oh gosh, like I'm fucked, but. You can't stay in that state for long. Exactly. So you're not wrong, man. Like I, 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 I envy that. I envy the, your idea of like f- success, your, in, your, the idea of failure, what you're trying to do, especially, um, with the vlogging. I feel like a lot of people can want to mirror that. They want to image that. And especially there's a lot of Disney vloggers. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's like, yep. there's a lot, a lot of, you can learn from all these people. Um, which is why I think. Now more than ever, I think it's the golden age to actually like do that to to yep. go and succeed. Like you, you have a nat- you have natural talents. Like thank I mean, you. like that's the thing. Thank like, you. It. like that's the one thing. Yeah, like, thank you. But bro, like one one of those things I I, li- I love talking about is like um, even film. In in that you're like a diverse guy. So like you talk about like uh, Marvel, DC. What's what, what's what got you into that? Uh, having. You know, that's a that's a wild ride for me because for a long time, so I grew up watching Spider-Man and Batman. Of course, I'm a 90s kid. Tobey Maguire ones? Or, well, or the, well, the animated, animated the, even, oh. even more retro, like the animated ones. I was, which, I mean, I was X-Men, dude. Like, like uh, the X-Men ones oh, you know, in the 90s. You know, stay tuned because uh, Johnny might have another, like, just specific podcast for that. So stay tuned Not for that. Not we will. We will. Yeah. We will, yes. Mitch is going to be on here. Uh, two of my other friends, we're going to have a panel. Uh, we're going to be talking about any, anything to do with entertainment. We'll start off with talking about Black Panther and like oh. all the all the all the sad and stuff. Talk about 2020. I know that's weird, dude. And that's the thing we have to talk about it. I like, know. And that's, yes. that's 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 it's one so one of the one of the key things, especially why I wanted to start this podcast before Election Day, because I was like, this is going to be a hectic year, and it already has been. And to not talk about it is even worse. So. Yeah. This is why, but yeah, stay tuned guys. We're going to be talking about that. So, uh, going back to how I got into it. Um, yeah, for a long time, I was really, really good with like keeping up with like the cartoons. You know, I grew up watching Spider-Man, Batman animated series. Shout out to that show. One of the best like superhero shows of all time. And then I watched like Justice League. Like a lot of people 
love that show, Justice League and Young Justice, also another great show. And then for many, many years throughout high school, I don't know if it was just playing sports, being busy with that type of thing, but I just strayed away from comic books and superheroes and like the thing that really made me happy in my life. And I went through a very like sad time. High school was really hard for me. And I think it was mostly due to the stress of being in like a very competitive athlete. And then something happened in college. I met the right people and I met the right friends and they reintroduced me to comics. And they're like, telling me about all these crazy comic books they read. And they got me into the uh, Infinity, uh, Infinity Gauntlet, that comic book. I don't know if you've read it. Yes. And the fact that the movies actually heighten that mm -hmm. is another reason why a lot of people should be into it. But yeah. keep going. So that was one of the biggest comics that I read, or my friend explained it to me. We were just, you know, we we're having a drink, we we're having a good time. And he's just like, dude, this comic book is crazy. He was like, Iron Man gets his head ripped off in the comic book. Like, I don't think people understand <sighs> no, that. They don't understand like, that, bro. And, and that, oh my <laughs> God, man. I, dude, in, it's, it's so baffling now that I, th like, we are part of the company that owns them, like Disney. Yeah, and we, yeah, yeah. Like, Granted, we're furloughed, but uh, like <laughs> it's just baffling to me, like how much, how big these characters were previous to the movies. Oh my god, and, yeah, yes, and then like to come to life and how much they inspired. This is why, like, I, we're gonna be talking about Black Panther. We're gonna skim on it a little bit, but like, um, how much of these characters have so much influence and so much mm -hmm. gravitas and so much uh, um, love to 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 everyone man that that oh, yeah. it's so inspiring and it, it it just stems from like the idea of imagination and I, it I'm goes like, deep dude it goes deep it man. goes deep very there was, deep there were so many times where i've read a comic looked at it and i i had to put down the comic literally was like oh my do you, god do you like, remember your first comic yes and no i don't remember okay. reading okay. it but i remember what it was okay and it was, uh, I got an action figure. It was actually a Venom action figure when I was like, I don't know, 10 or 11. Uh -huh. And it came with a Venom comic. And I remember oh. that. And I was just like, this is the coolest thing oh, ever. And that I, is I, so like, cool, dude. I, it was only like five or six pages long. It wasn't yeah. very long, but uh -huh. I was like, this is so cool. Bro, okay. So my first one was a Transformer one. Really? Was, yeah, it was weird, bro. It, like, I I, uh, I loved Transformer. I, I still love the Transformer. I hate the movies. Like, I, I, like <laughs> yeah. don't get me wrong. I get, I get what you're you, saying. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I love, I love the first one. Uh, the second, I love the action sequences, but there is something about Michael Bay films. That I'm just like, yeah, dude, bro, like, it's too much. It's too much. It's like, calm down. Yeah, <laughs> yes, hundred percent. Have some more depth. You know, just don't. We don't want just action packed shit. But you know, love these characters, and oh, yeah. and that transpired into, oh my gosh, man, my collection got amazing like i only mm -hmm. brought like so so many comics here yeah. but like at home i have loads and loads of of of, of um old comics that i i feel like the old comics have a lot more um uh, i don't know man they they, they just scream more more like like soul they're uh, soulful yeah, yeah they're uncensored there's a lot oh, of, oh yeah you know what i mean there's mm -hmm. there's a lot more like uh, reality to them they're kind of risque too. Yes, like, yeah yeah too. yeah bro like and that's a thing now like oh, you yeah. know like i do i'm bro i'm i'm very into like uh i'm very into like uh pinup girls but <laughs> but like the thing is like i i love vintage wear and so oh, yeah. and vintage it, it's it's a, a wide mm -hmm. variety i'm gonna have somebody on the podcast to talk about that but it it screams to even like how how vintage is in these um in the comics like and i love that because it screams like how different how, how the difference it is back then to what mm -hmm. it is now and so so i just I, I don't know if if now is better like i love the old i think people can learn yeah. from the old but like the new it's, i don't know man it's, it's a tough it's a tough decision and uh going back to like tying in even with the comics and disney yes the classic just like going back last night i was actually i was up pretty late watching disney plus and i was watching what were you watching uh the life of life of color the uh what is it it's like the life of color is like uh waltz sorry i'm like oh. stumbling about this it's like waltz like vision of disneyland yes, and he's yes. like the, and old, like the, the, old, the old 50s 60s, the old 50s old, one like the where 60s, he's talking about epcot yeah. and shit like that no no no, no. this is oh, like okay, this is mind. so I'm this is the 20th that. anniversary of after so this is like mid 60s okay. so like well, I should sorry. Ten years after uh, Disney opened, Disneyland okay. opened, and they were showing all the new things, and they were showing how like the park is like super like the park was kind of a failure when it first came out. Like in the early '50s, it was kind of a failure for the first like year and a half, maybe two years, and then in the mid '60s '60s was when it was really booming, 
and like, sorry, I'm getting off topic, but going back, like comparing the classic Disney to like classic, even like comic books or like classic movies, dude, that time period, seeing that old like color footage from back then, like m most of the time when you see like old footage from the fifties and sixties, it's black and white because like color wasn't very common. Right, right, right. Um, but whenever color is present or when they add color, uh, it is, it makes so much more of a difference. You feel a connection to these people and you look and you compare, you know, classic Disney to classic comic books. And you're like, there was something there that we don't have anymore. Like that, like classic feeling. We we don't have that like genuine, I mean, and not to say like, you know, great artwork isn't great artwork, but like, we don't have that like touch of humanity that we used to have. Like watching this show, I people agree. were watching the parades and they were dying laughing. You don't see that at Disney no. world anymore. No. You don't see people dying laughing no. at the parade. People were dying laughing, like literally no cell phone in sight, obviously. I didn't have phones back then. What do you, but, I love everything you're saying, man. I I, I totally agree. I, I, I can even add that into the idea of fashion, the idea of music, the idea of like, there's so much more gravitas to, mm -hmm. to old stuff. Yes. But what do you think? Why do you think it changed? Like, why do you think there's a... Dude, dude uh, the internet. Like, I, something about it, the early 2000s when there's like a flip that switched, dude. Or, sorry, there was a uh, switch that flipped. Uh, uh, slice of pie, life. <laughs> and... Uh, there was a there was a switch that flipped somewhere in the early 2000s where you got rid of that classic feeling like I don't know I don't know what it was but like the world started becoming more like there was, it was just like chaos like not not chaos but like just like things politically and just things started happening when the internet came out Fuck. and like remember the early 2000s like YouTube and and just the crazy you used to go like everyone used to go to like these websites that would like uh, what was it called? It's like funnyjunk.com, yes. like stuff like that. It yes. was like, and they were raunchy, dude. Yeah, like, and very raunchy, very man. raunchy. Like, and like something happened in the early two thousands where it's just like that classic feeling just went out the went window. Out the window. I, I, I don't mean to stop you there, man. But uh, like for one, you realize that we're like the the last generation that knows before technology. Yes. This is, do you know how crazy that is? That is insane. I think about that all the time, dude. bro. I, oh, I had a I had a, a guest on here, and he has no social media. And that he intrigued me on that. Like, he's our age, has no social media, and is grinding his ass off. That's insane. It's insane how how he's successful <laughs> without what social media. Uh, no, dude, he's um, he he worked. He was a cast member, um, but he also had like his own business doing other things. Man, um, we didn't really touch on what he did, but we, I wanted to know his idea of why he doesn't like he didn't fall trapped to the social media internet yeah fate, so fat. weird and um and a lot of it he's he's from he's from kentucky really yeah he's a, he, uh his name's riley crumb man you should check it out um uh, but uh, he, I, I know a lot of people have deleted their facebook 100 percent. that's a big thing he only he only had facebook because we had to have facebook for our mm. our 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 job that was it and he would never get on it ever yeah. again he's married now and i haven't talked i haven't talked to him since but he man, he baffled me because what he ended up saying was like, like, the the pros and cons of social media and the pros and cons of like, like, what's gonna end up happening, how bad it's getting, and how, how like you know, it's getting uh, very bad, dude. And and it, 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 what he said, he's like, dude, we were made in the '90s, man, but were. we we were we were we were in the age like where we knew before t like technology and the age after technology, man. Isn't that scary? And I was just like. There's people born in the 2000s that are older than 18, yeah, and and are like in they're ingrained in this virtual reality that isn't real life. Man. Yeah, it's, it's scaring me. Yeah, dude, I was at a bar the other day, and you know how they have those neon signs? It's like if you're you're 21, if you were born after this date, and the date on the wall said like 2000 or something. I was like, what? It's like 2002 like, right yeah, now. Yeah, it's like what? Crazy. I was like, this is insane. But do you remember like the days back of like? Um, I don't know, like how if you guys had a computer at your house, but I, we had a computer. We had one in the house. One, yeah, one, one. yes. And uh, we had dial-up. We had dial-up. Did you have dial-up, dude? Yeah, <laughs> man, the, the, the sound it makes. And it's like, <laughs> yes, and you had to be like, "Mom, get off the phone." <laughs> Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to play Club Peng Penguin or something. Dude, like, I don't know. It was like slowly, slow. <laughs> dude, I was a tycoon roller coaster. Yes, bro. Like, do you remember that? Game? I love that game, dude, man. Uh, PC games, man. <sighs> Did you ever play Populous? Oh, dude, stop, <laughs> man, dude. You're, you're like hitting home right now. It's crazy how much like I remember all these fucking games. 
but it's it, dude, it's baffling me right now, man. Because I, the, <laughs> I, I, I firmly believe that there has to be some sort of discipline when it comes to social media, mm-hmm. and there is no sort of discipline. Yeah, no. And when I talked to him, I was like learning as I go. Like I was, I was like, oh my god, man! Like you're 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 one in a million type of guy right now, especially in this age. Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, like so. Having you on is is a breath is a breath of fresh yeah. air, and so I I don't know man I I I envy those type of people, but I'm also scared for the people that can't get off of social media as much oh, as like oh my god it's terrifying it's terrifying and, and I see it all the time with my friends and it's like it's like come on dude I see go it to in, the park like I, go to the actual not Disney park go, go to the park and take a deep breath like yes don't bring your phone oh uh, just like you just, know you know how painful <laughs> it is for people like yeah um. Have you ever seen? Okay, I, I don't know if you. I, I've seen a, a picture of um, people watching the fireworks show. Yeah, and, but it's a picture from from way up high. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and it, it's <laughs> it's it's picture of like everybody on their fucking phones recording, and it's like, dude, enjoy the moment of what it is. Like sometimes I feel like even I would use it in a concept of dating also, but like how how much that that whole idea of even dating is like it's it's been askew just by, because of, of social media and um i'm like i'm trying to i'm trying to grasp all this it, together and trying to make it make sense but i can't you know what i want to do sometime so what do you want to do sometime <laughs> okay so i just thought about this actually i've been kind of thinking about this for a while but this is I a great to... thing to, this is a great <laughs> thing to think about especially on this. I used to talk to all these, uh, I used to be in bell services at Disney. That was my job. So we talked to all the bellmen, right? Right. And the bellmen would tell us these crazy stories about their trips that they would take when they were in like in their early twenties, like the same age as me. And they would just be so nostalgic about it. And one thing I want to do that I took away from talking to these guys is I want to pretend like it's 1980 again. And I want to get a group of like five guys and take a van and be like, listen, we're leaving our phones at home and we're getting a roadmap. And we're getting cash, no credit card, no nothing. And we're going to try to make this trip happen and go across the freaking country. Mm-hmm. Or something. Like, could we, could we do it? Like, or is, or do we live in a time period where that's not possible anymore? I went, I'm going to chime on that. I say, I'm totally down for that. I want to do it. <laughs> but two, um, two, I, me and my roommate, we went to, we went to the mountains, uh, in July. Uh, we went to the Appalachian mountains and, um, for three days, we didn't have a lot. We didn't have service. We had to go to a, a town. This is why I love mountains. I love. I do too. I love the idea of like you're out of society. You're out of reality. It's amazing. You, you go and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Man, I needed that. I needed that. Mm-hmm. And what I felt, I think it was just because I'm still in the, um, I'm in that social media circle right now. I slowly, I'm slowly getting out of it. But like what I felt was the first day was a temptation. Like I just, Oh God, I got to know where, where it is. Like I got to know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Third, second and third for, uh, going on the fourth day. I didn't care. Yeah. Just put it down a little bit. Yeah. You can pull it, but I didn't care, man. Um, I didn't care at that point. And I think it was doing, it was doing me more good. Cause at that point it's like, I was, I was in the mountains and I was enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like we can still take pictures, mm-hmm. you know, you, you just don't post them. You're just like yeah, still yeah. having them. And I, I'm like, oh my gosh, man, this was like an experience that I, I was, I enjoyed and That's I love. super nice. Yes. There's something kind of creepy about mountains though. Have you ever experienced that? Bro, we almost died in the mountain, bro. Yes, like me too. It fucking rained and I was in a cloud and I, like for those of you what, what know, state? We were we were in uh, North Carolina. We were, really? Yeah, we were in a, about the Appalachian. Yeah, yeah, Appalachians. No. Yeah, the, the Fontana Dam. We were close by there, and we went straight up. And dude, we were this. We were like less than a mile up there, but it started raining. It started raining, right? And um, it was me, uh, my roommate, and his brother. We go, and uh, we, it rain was cold. We started hearing like <laughs> fucking footsteps. Uh, like dude it was crazy i was like are there bears up here like oh I'm pretty there sure. are bears dude and i started freaking out and i was just like dude we need to stay put we need to know he's like no bro i think we're almost close to the mountain we, we our gps isn't working so we we're just like oh, no. we're, we're stuck on the trail so we finally get a tarp we try to like uh, uh, like barricade ourselves from the rain yeah. and then we i hear wonderful weather we're having right from like another another pass like 
uh, traveler mm. that's coming down the mountain. And he's like, yeah, man, you're like a mile to the top. And, <laughs> and, uh, and dude, and we're in a cloud. We're in a cloud. We're seeing lightning strikes. Was it the strikes. Smokies or the, I don't, I don't know. It was I the Smokies. Get, okay, it was Smokies. Smokies right. I said Appalachian, sorry. Yeah, Smokies. but no, it's, it, it's part of it. Like, I guess like, it yeah. keeps going up. But continue. And bro, uh, when, he, when I saw him, 30 minutes in the raid, I was just like, oh my gosh, there's people. There's people up here. I'm not going to die. That's and good. And, and so, like, they have, like, their sticks. He's like, yeah, man, but we're going down. We are going back to the safety because this is not <laughs> This is not good. He's like, uh, there's a little, there's a little, um, uh, like, a kind of like a little um, thing that you can camp on right there. And we were backpacking. Mm -hmm. So, we, we were like, do we want to do, our, all our stuff is wet. Let's just go back to the car. So six hours of hiking all the way freaking down the mountain, man. Yeah, I twisted my ankle like four times, and it was it was an experience, man. I'm not I I love the experience, but dude, for people that hate outdoors and a lot of people, they would, they, they, they couldn't handle it. No, not not yeah. yeah. A, a, I feel like a lot of people we know, or I mean, I probably have like. 50. I'm not trying to show off, but I probably since trying high to, school, you're trying to flex, bro. <laughs> since like middle school, high school, I probably have like 50 friends. I mean, you make a lot of friends in college yeah, and, um, uh, I bet like probably over half could not, no, no, could no, not bro. do it. And, um, glamour camping, like glamping, glamping. And, yeah. yeah like, where you pay to camp. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Go, they, yeah. They can do like, that. But not backpacking or no, anything no, like that. No, it's, no, it's too much. It's too much. Um, speaking of mountains though, and I have had two treacherous stories on one. One was involved skiing and one Ooh, involved please, my car. Please share. Um, please I, share I will in a second, audience. but, uh, I, I mentioned I lived in Colorado and have you ever seen the shining? <sighs> Who has not seen it? <laughs> well, the girl I was with last night has not seen the shining, but yeah, that's a different story. And, um, we could get on that. Yeah. Another time, but but like... there's this thing. I read the book too. Okay. So there's this thing about Stephen King about mountains and he does a great job to describe like the mountains are like almost like alive, dude. It's weird to say, but like, I mean, they are, I mean, trees live on them and, yeah, and yeah, like yeah. animals, they are alive. Yeah, they are alive. But like, they like almost, it's going to sound weird. I'm not crazy. I promise. But they almost like whisper, like it's weird. And in the both times that I almost died on the mountain, like one time I just got this like eerie feeling of like you might not be okay. Like you might, like you might pass away today, but like, but you're going to, you're going to be fine. Just concentrate. Like, I don't know if that's my inner monologue, but like one time I was skiing and like, I got caught in this avalanche and like, I thought I was going to die. Literally thought I was going to die. Fuck. I did not have a helmet on. I was like caught in this avalanche. I could not stop myself. And I was like, if I hit a tree, I'm screwed. I'm dead. Oh, like my head was split open and I'm dead. Right. Yeah. Um, that one was pretty scary, but the scariest was one time I was in my car in Colorado and I was skiing all day at uh, Keystone Mountain, which is... Oh, Keystone Mountain. Yeah, I know, yeah I know Keystone yeah. in Colorado. And yeah, yeah. I was skiing all day. And I was driving away. And I was like, I got to leave now because it was a snowstorm. I was like, I have to leave now. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Uh, yeah. I'm screwed. Yeah. And um, so I was going up this steep, steep hill. I actually I took the wrong turn. And I ended up going the back way home instead of like the main highway. And it was bad, dude. There was like semis up there, and there was like people like sw it was every man for themselves. The I'm not even way joking. is always a windy road, isn't it weird, dude? I'm not even joking. It was every man for themselves. People were <laughs> sliding in between semis, and they were just like, "I swear, I was, please do not hit me." Like it, I might slide out, and I might hit the semi, yeah. and I'm screwed. You're screwed. I might not be able to stop, and I, my car might fall off the mountain. Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you just have to like pray. Like I'm not even that religious, but you just have to like sit there and be like, I. I might die up here. Like, yeah. I got to be careful. That was my experience on the mountain. And the whole time, like I said, I had that weird feeling. Like, I'm not crazy. I didn't really hear a voice. But, like, my inner monologue and my voice was like, in my head was like, you might. I think, I think. You might have troubles up here. <laughs> and maybe I'm just going into this whole idea of, like, meditation and shit like that. But I think, I think there is a correlation with that. With um, Trust your gut feeling. Yes. But especially when it comes to survival. Mm -hmm. Like, you're at that point we're going back to our instincts and going like, no, we, we are trying to survive and I have to trust my gut and mm -hmm. something is passing through my gut and telling me my brain, Hey, fucker, get yes. out of, uh, get out of the state right now. Yes. Like, so you're, I don't I, no, like you, th that feeling is, I, I think a hundred percent true. Like people that don't understand that they, they don't trust their gut a lot. They, they don't, they try to like not make it make sense, man. And mm -hmm. it, it's just weird. But th I think there is something, uh, um, supernatural and, nat and unnatural, but natural thing about that that I'm trying to like. Have you seen? Explain. Okay, so going back to TikTok, TikTok conspiracies. 
TikTok conspiracy. I'm telling yeah. you, man. They, yeah. TikTok is like the it's, new place for conspiracies. For real. It's, crazy. Got, it's kind of like a rabbit hole you have to dive down before they come up on your For You page. But Dude, once you dive TikTok down, TikTok is a rabbit hole. It like, is. It, yes. It's just crazy. Um, somebody said, they said, what if your gut feeling was just you from your future sending signals to your past subconsciously telling you like this isn't right and like and Whoa. like and like what if you live your life until you get it right like right like that's your future because you already did it and you're subconsciously it's like at one point in time in your future it becomes a memory right so yeah, like yeah, yeah. what we're doing now becomes a memory in our future so like eventually we are going to live past this moment right and then you're going to remember it as a memory but like what if your memory is that gut feeling like telling you to be careful and it's something to like really breathe in. I'm trying to, I'm trying to <laughs> comprehend it right now. My, Dude, my I, little brain. I'm not going to explain in it, but it's like, so it's like, let me try to explain this again. Well, have you seen the movie, uh, in this, in, into the grass or in into the wild? I think no, 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 it, no. Is no. It not that one? It's into the tall grass. It's into a Stephen, Co- Stephen King book uh, that they made. In, it's a Netflix original. No, I haven't. Check it. Out. I watched it last night. Dude, it's, Stephen King has a lot of things out there, man. Like yes. things that I haven't even like. I haven't seen. It's a, he I'm wrote, reading a book right now. That's his, and I'm just like, they haven't made a movie about this yet. Like, yeah, what's ex- the fuck? exactly, dude? Stephen King is a genius. He's dude. a genius. Bro. Genius. Sometimes 100%. he's over the top. Sometimes he says things like there's unnecessary things. But I think that happens with a lot of great minds. But keep going. Yeah, and well, sorry to get sidetracked, but no. not to mention Stephen there's King. There's no sidetrack, bro. Man. He. <laughs> Stephen King wrote, I'm not even joking. He wrote books blacked out, like literally like high on cocaine and like on alcohol and like literally did not remember writing the the book uh, Cujo. What? Yeah. He wrote like the whole book. And I think parts of The Shining, he didn't even remember writing. Like what, what a man right there. I don't know if I can get a clap, <laughs> can get a clap right now. Dude, what a man. But anyways, so this movie I was watching last night, I'm not going to spoil it, but it deals with kind of the same not really the same concepts of what I was just talking about, but like kind of like a time loop yeah. scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, this movie, kind of bad acting, kind of good acting, kind of just cheesy, weird Netflix things that they were doing, but the concept is insane. And like I said, it's a Stephen King novel or based on one. Okay. And bro, it's kind of going back to what I said about like the whole, like what if you really, you live your life to the fullest, but eventually what we're doing now is a memory so like eventually what we're doing now is going to become a memory so your future self is remembering what we're doing now and sending you it doesn't make a lot of sense but sending you signals and that's like deja vu or that's like your gut feeling like it doesn't make a lot of sense but like no but i'm adding it kind of does i'm adding in more things that kind of like would make it make sense yeah that's why i'm trying to like i'm not gonna explain it no it makes it it makes sense and even if it is like a story like there it stems from some sort of truth like I, that's all i could say exactly. from that but um from from that aspect uh deja vu and like people have had that people have oh, had I, that experience I have it a lot sometimes a hundred percent yeah i don't know i'm going into like this virtual reality shit right now but i'm just kind of like um i'm thinking deja vu as as a past self as a like me thinking i'm like uh in I've already lived this life and like it sort of like it, it's kind of like role playing into, Hey, like my inner thought is trying to make me think of like yeah. what's going to happen yeah. next. Yeah. And, and I don't know, man, I'm just trying to make it make sense. And everything I you're mean, saying, like, honestly, you know okay. I mean? So sometimes I just talk out, out my ass. Like, this is, like, <laughs> this, dude, this is a beauty about the podcast. Like I love this. Like, like, like bro, I, do, I don't but I'm not even, I'm getting off topic, but it's like, <laughs> But did you see that Joe Rogan might do like the uh, like a moderation with uh, both presidential candidates? No way. Yes, man. No it, way. Yeah, I mean Trump already agreed to it. And really? Yeah, Joe Biden. If they, oh wow. You know how crazy that would be if yeah. they, you get those two guys on a podcast with Joe Rogan? Oh my God. What, uh, well, you know, have you seen the Bernie Sanders? One? Yes, I saw yeah. that one. I saw the Andrew Ga- Andrew Yang one. I saw yeah. Tulsi Gabbard one. I've seen almost all of them. But well, I was listening to another Joe Rogan podcast, and apparently one? he was. Um, I don't. Oh, it was him and Duncan Trussell. Oh, okay, okay. And um, apparently he was like, he kind of like took blame for Bernie dropping out of the race, kind of like kind what? of kind of. He took partial blame because he said he's like I had him on my podcast, and then the news stations started saying like, oh. Joe Biden, or I mean, sorry, uh, Bernie Sanders was on a podcast with, with Joe, Joe Rogan, Rogan and, and he, of... and Joe Rogan talks about like all this crazy stuff and like, blah, blah, I, blah. I can and, understand. Like, I can understand. And they that. were like blaming, like they were blaming him for all the things Joe Rogan said. Bro, Joe, he leans more left than anything. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. 
but but that's the thing. I think he just calls out bullshit that he knows is bullshit from the left. He's pretty middle. He's he's I, pretty I agree. middle. I, I from my perspective, I agree. But I mean, but like he, I love what I love about it is that he he understands both sides. Uh, I think pretty well because pretty he, well, he, yeah. And in he brings on people that are somewhat controversial. Like mm-hmm. and and so yeah. I, oh yeah, yes. And so <laughs> at that point, I think I think there's a reasoning for that it's just to make you understand a perspective and if you can't if you want to shun a perspective out i think i think that's what's upsetting about right now is just like, yeah. especially for like cancel culture yeah and stuff, you know and and it's weird i don't want to say this because i love i love the guy joe rogan but like he uh the older he gets probably the more right he probably leans like not in a bad way like not in a bad way but like i think you can say that about everybody though. yeah because the, the more I, conservative I, you get yeah, the older you, the you older get, you yeah. get. Uh, and I, I mean i don't know yet i'm 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 pretty like Free spirited right yeah. now, so like I don't know, but I, yeah. but well, the more conscious I need to get about money, I'm just like, hmm. I'm super hmm. weird about politics because like I've done. There's so many things in my life where I've dealt with like things like this, and I'm just like, I don't think it, like end does it really matter. I feel like somebody else is pulling the strings really 100%. in the end. Like 100%. it doesn't does, in the end, it doesn't really matter too Bro, much. I, I mean, uh, I don't know if a lot of people this way. I'm a, I'm an independent. Like I'm a, I guess I'm like in the middle. Like yeah, I, I, I uh, I'm pretty close to the middle. I, I, and that's the thing. I mean, you're from Kentucky, and yeah. and it's like, but you live here in the most yeah. probably like one of the most liberal liberal places in Orla- in Florida, and it's like I'm from Texas, dude. And yeah. so like, the, and from there, I I stem from like my roots of not just being a like a minority, I guess, but also being from Texas. Yeah. And it's it it just it's a really cool balance, I think. Texas and Florida are very similar. A hundred percent. This is why I think I think my the the move for me was was pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, for somebody from a different state, let's just say like a like a Alabama, very, yeah, like, or, uh, no, Arkansas, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, some, something like if from even like like Midwest, it, some, oh, okay, some, Ohio, Ohio, some somewhere right there. I think you'll see a big difference. Yeah, and I I, I think you would see a big big huge difference. difference. Yeah, what's weird about uh, both Florida and uh, in Texas is that like Austin, super liberal, right? Have you been? No. And same with Orlando, Austin, right? right? Orlando's kind of pretty liberal, but then you step outside of Austin, you step outside of Orlando, are very conservative. Yes. Like super conservative. Yes. Uh, I, and I could say, I could, I, I mean, I love Austin, man. I would live in Austin. I would love to go there yes. sometime. Uh, I went to school in North Texas, and that's also very liberal. Yeah. And I love it. I, I love the hip. I'm a very hip, hipster yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. Like a, same. I, like, and, um, but I think I, also we had to have some rational result, like rational reasoning and, mm-hmm. and I, think, I, I don't think it kind of goes hand in hand right now and um uh i don't know man i think there's some pros and cons with both sides that i just i can't fully say i'm fully this or fully that i, I yeah. and if, because of that i think this is why i love talking to people on a podcast because and i think it could work especially i'm talking about joe rogan's podcast yeah. i think it could work because you're going to see a different side of both of both people, yeah. and and at that point, it's not the it's not the side that's on national TV, but it's a side that could be beneficial for for either party. Yeah, and I think that's that right now more than ever. I think that's what people are really clamoring for: is to people be behind Biden and people being behind mm-hmm. Trump. If you if you support either party, but I, I'm like I'm like dude. Give it a shot. Fuck it. Like I, I just like I'm gonna, like, dude. Right now, 2020 is like it's no, like it's whatever. Dude. It's whatever, man. It's whatever. Like, it's like right now, just like aliens are real. Like, oh, come on. Man. Like, but, so uh, sorry. Before, sorry to get sidetracked. What we were you gonna say? F- finish what you were, what were you gonna say? I think that was it. I don't even know. Um, like, uh, so going back to what you were saying, you you mentioned something about past life. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. You said something about that, and and it stuck in my head as soon as you said that. Right. Going back to TikTok, I saw something about it on TikTok. Oh, like past what life do you stuff? think of past life? I think okay, so wow, this is the this is probably one of the big uh, one of the big podcasts because uh, this is like post COVID. I did a pre almost like almost during the shutdown. Mm-hmm. A po- that was the last podcast I did, and the reason for that I haven't talked to a lot of like people aren't comfortable with this whole like mass thing and stuff like that. So I was just like, I'm going to wait to do the podcast for, for things to mellow down. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, now it's, there's a lot of talk. Th- there's a lot of thoughts to that. I think I'm not super religious. Um, I, I was born Same. in the Bible belt. Like, yeah. so I was born into this idea of like religion and yeah, uh, yeah, a yeah. Ca- Catholicism, yeah. baptism, all this mm-hmm. other stuff. Is your um, family Catholic? 
um, parts of it. And then I, I think my, um, my immediate family going to my, my, my grandparents, they're Catholic, but my yeah, immediate my, family is Baptist. Yeah. I have part of my family's Catholic. Too, yeah. So. so, and then at a certain point they stopped going to church and I think they kind of saw some of the, some of the negativities that church would end up bringing. And, and it's not all about church, mm -hmm. which is understandable and honestly admirable. Um, at the same time, it makes me think about like other things because I started get, reaching into like other religions, man, yeah, like uh, Buddhism. Buddha, and this, that's what kind of like got yeah. me into that the idea. Not even like just that one. Like I'm not into like Hinduism or anything, like, but I wanted to understand it. I wanted mm -hmm. to understand like yeah. Judaism and yeah. like all these different all these different ones, man. That I'm like the orthodox part of religion. I think it's very cool to go into it and not really shun anybody and that's that's so hard because that's what it is about like now people want to like yeah, yeah, yeah. say they're right exactly and i'm uh, let's keep in mind i'm dumb as fuck so <laughs> so um, i think you're a smart guy oh thanks man but i'm dumb as fuck so that don't take whatever i'm gonna say so serious <laughs> well we're all dumb yeah. exactly but it, just to clarify for the people that are gonna <laughs> take it like to to to, to heart i'm dumb as fuck but I do believe that there's some some I, some things that have to do with a past life that I feel like have to do with this idea of that stems more from religion and that goes into um, the multi universe. Yes. The, 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 yes. So, so wow, man, you're getting so excited. I feel like I, feel <laughs> I was like about you wanted, to talk about that I, earlier. Yes. Actually. And so um, and even just the, that reasoning is that it kind of makes sense to, to younger generations. Yes. And, and it's weird because this is the reason why I wanted to revamp the podcast in a different way, because now it's, it's given me this outlet to make people understand that people are clamoring to talk about this stuff and not in a short video way, mm -hmm. not in a TikTok way, yep, but they yep. want more depth into why people think why they think that like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. so, because of that, I'm very open to understanding more knowledge about our past selves, not just our past selves individually, but past selves of people before us, past civilizations. Yeah, yeah. And you get more understanding that way. Mm -hmm. So my past self, I feel like, and this is, this is where I'm stemming from, is that people don't like being put like the stars don't like being written. They like having yep. this whole independency yep, thing. Yep, yep. And because of that, people hate the idea of like them actually having a past self that was already written that I make my own uh, individuality. Yeah. I make my own path. And, yeah. and it's, it, it's a common struggle between like, maybe this is destined and maybe you were destined to do this and maybe you can change it. Like we do, I think we have a balance of both. You can always change the future. But 100%, the, yeah. but but the past was the past, and that doesn't mean that it was seen as bad. You can make it seem as whatever it is, but make what it is of it, and keep going on. Mm -hmm. So that's all I kind of gotta say. Yeah. So I, interestingly enough, let me hear your standpoint. <laughs> let me like I agree like, with everything you said. Honestly, whoa. everything you said. Um, this and is a great just, podcast. Just, yeah. Saying, yeah. Like, <laughs> Thank you for having me. By dude, the way, no, thanks, man. And uh, I'm having a blast. And um, so. Going back to that, interestingly enough, I did study um, a class. I didn't. I did okay in it. But okay. It, it, it was uh, uh, religions of Asia. Okay. So I did study Buddhism and Hinduism. And, I like that. And Buddhism, they do. It, it, for those of you who don't know, I'm not like so. I'm not a very religious person. Like I said, I did grow up in a Christian family, um, half Protestant, half Catholic. And so I see all the sides of almost everything. And even um, like I have a stepmom who's Jewish. So I've seen all the sides of most religions. And the interesting thing about Buddhism is it's not so much a religion. I mean, I'm not trying to downplay it at all, but it's not so much a religion as almost like a, a meditation or a practice. Do you meditate? I have before, yes. All right, that's, uh, I'm going to high-five you on that It's one. good. Okay, uh, I agree. You, for anyone who is dealing with any type of thing, like, you know, it's, we could talk about meditation probably all day, honestly. Bro, but you, let's, let's get on that. I highly recommend it. Keep going but past that. So past life, Buddhists do believe in recycling life and it's not in a weird type of scenario it's kind mm -hmm. of in more honestly kind of a scientific kind of type thing i mean yes. not super scientific i don't want to you know say it's like you know it's it is what it is but they kind of they don't go by it like with a religious standpoint it's not like a bible where you read it and it's like oh thou shall become another person no it's more like 
well, if you think about it, life is kind of recycled just as energy is recycled. Like if you think about it, like that is true. Like scientifically, that is true. Like, you know, energy cannot be created or destroyed. That's science, baby. Like that's science Bro, you're, right there. You're getting, I love <laughs> and, this. I love, keep going. And keep it's going. like, so if we are just made of energy and the Buddhists definitely just think this and they're very, they're very open. Like if you ever talk oh, to a, I highly, 100%. I highly recommend talking to a Buddhist person. Yes. They're very interesting. Uh, our, my, our mutual friend Bows Buddhist and he loves talking about I did about not it. know that. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I would love to talk to him about yeah, that. Yeah, he so. loves, he, yeah, he loves to talk. He would openly talk about it for sure. And like, just keep an open mind. And that's the sad thing about uh, most people in today's day and age is like, yes. they don't keep an open mind about, especially about religion. And that's not good. You know, you should always like, even if you are like, whatever religion you are, most religions say like, respect your neighbor, right? And mm -hmm. like, you should, that includes listening to your neighbor. And so keep an open mind and think about the way that they're talking about this life cycle being recycled. recycled. Like, energy being recycled i think it makes perfect sense not to say i 100 percent believe uh, yeah, in it you, you you're um infinite. but i definitely think if if energy cannot be created and destroyed and i am energy i would love to think that i go on to create something else i don't know if that's another person if that's mm -hmm. a tree if that's a plant mm -hmm. who knows i mean going back to the multi multi, multi universe, multi -universe. Multi -universe going, going. what if what if when I die, I don't even become a tree here on earth? What if I become something on another planet, right? Like that's even more insane. Like, and uh, going back to, you know, TikTok, uh -huh. uh, this one mother was talking about how her son had this like profound experience where she was watching a video or they were watching a video of 9-11. And like the son like talked about how he like in detail talked about this experience of being a firefighter. Yeah. It was insane. Like, and it, people were calling her out, like saying, "Oh, this is from Reddit." Blah blah blah. Even oh, if they, they were calling it, out her shit. Yeah, they were calling. They were like saying, "Like you're fake. Like you're. This is from Reddit. Like you're just. Yeah. This is a story." Blah yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. She's like, even if it's a story or not, it came from somewhere, and and I think it came from my son. And she's like, and he experienced something that I would say is it past a life. Past life. Yeah. And a lot Whoa. of people have experienced that. Like Whoa. some people even getting crazy, crazy details, like even saying their past life name and how they died. And then people look it up on Google and it's true, dude. It's a hundred percent true. Uh, have you ever seen the show, uh, expedition unknown? No, but great show. I've heard, to I've check heard out. It. Yes. Great show to check out. And in one of the, uh, he did a special like little like mini series yes. where he did, uh, what happens after you die. That okay. was part of the series. And he, went through some of the past life things. And there's like a medit going back to meditation. There's uh -huh. a meditation you can do if you're curious about what you were in a past life. And he curiously enough found a person that he might've been in a past life. And he said he died of, uh, I believe it was malaria. Mm -hmm. And he even had like all of the details and he looked it up and there was a guy, the name was a little different, but there was a guy who was a fisherman who died of malaria <laughs> at this specific time who could have easily been in a country where this guy could have been like related to this person. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, I could talk about it for hours, but past life is a hundred percent. Like I believe it could be plausible. Okay. Uh, whoa. Uh, okay. <laughs> I know I so, said a no, lot. No, 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 um, <laughs> uh, no, man. I, uh, you are, I a hundred percent. I can kind of agree with a lot of things that you're saying. Um, um, for the most part, uh, one, I didn't know where I was at and I, oh my God, I, I want to talk to him about more about that stuff. And he, he's, he's a very open guy. I love him. He's, he's great. Oh, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Um, um, dude, it, it's, it's, it, we've gotten to a point where a lot of things are scary. They're scared of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Yes. And do you think... And it's, this is this is still also controversial. But uh, do you think that there's a lot of 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 um, oh man, I, I can't believe I'm about to say this. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, so no judgments here. No judgments. Okay. No there's no judgments. Cats, a... like listen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but do you think that there's a lot of um, the ideas of heaven, the ideas of hell, the ideas of this structure of mm -hmm. of all this stuff? all these things that we are trying to kind of like um, make it make sense because we fear the unknown that there, this is why we are in this age right now where a lot of people don't, don't agree with this. They don't agree with this past life stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it just the idea of like, you know, to me, honestly, I think 
I don't. I'm not. And I'm not against any religion. What I'm shape. not either. Yeah, what, I'm, not yeah, either. No, I'm not saying that either. Um, and I think both of us are very open minded. Yes. And um, I think it's the whole. Some people think it's more comforting to believe in heaven or hell, but honestly, it might be a little more scary in my mind. Like I've had some very weird experiences throughout my life, and I don't really want to go into them too much. But I had recently. I had a dream. It was a very pleasant dream, but it was a dream where I was in heaven. And it wasn't what I expected. And in some ways, it could be more scary than a past life. Like, and a past life is just so scary because people are like, well, I, I might not remember my life. And you're saying that, like, my life is kind of, like, not worth anything because I become someone else. And then, like, I'm just kind of recycled. And that's, like, they don't want to be seen as, like, a recycled person. Right, right, right. But it's, like, how does that take away from you as a person? Like, just because you might, your energy might be recycled into someone else's right. energy how does that take away from you as a person you're still there yeah like you're not erased from history you're not erased from people's memory you're still there like you're still you were still that person you were still that person it's kind yeah. of cool. it's almost like a superpower dude honestly it's like, uh, <laughs> and, but, and um i and the thing is i just feel like i i would love to know more like i yeah. would love to to delve deeper into these things and uh one of the things that riley uh my the a previous the previous um the guy with no social media he came on he he was like he's like you're so open-minded man um uh, he's like he, he was talking to another gentleman about that he, and he's like do you ever think this just because of like you feel like you're lazy like and i was <laughs> and i was and i, and I was like I, that made me think i was like oh, it, it made me think that's I like was atheism like, that's like athe- <laughs> i know i know i was just like wait a minute wait a minute and um <laughs> at some point a lot of things stem true from from things like you know there there are some attributes that come with that but it, how how i how i picture it is um i i talk good about structures and i talk good about that their religion is good for mm-hmm. people like that people that need structure oh, and i think yeah. a lot of people don't have that that people like us that have this idea like i have a free realm of of going more deeper into it that we don't, we don't need that struggle of, 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 um, st- of structure as much as, cause I think we, yeah. we understand it. Um, so what it gets me to, it gets me to understand is that the, these d- different structures I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it, con- I'm, I'm trying to make it make sense to oh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And I'm trying to make it make sense to, to people that, um, definitely need structures. Like I definitely think that structure is a bad are, thing. No, it's never a bad thing. But then, um, uh, the idea of opening up, that's what's also bad is that they want to stay to these structures. They mm-hmm. want to, they want to stick yeah, to it because that's yeah. all they know. Mm-hmm. And th- and that's all that they feel like is, is right. And so because of that, um, I think that's also a limiting belief is that, um, I also think that you should do things that scare you. Um, and oh, I think, I yes. think, I think there's like, there, there's like things that go into like therapeutic sense, uh, of, 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 uh, of not just the, the sensation of, of, um, like let's just say skydiving, but there's this a uh, beautiful, blissful way of, and I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to. Yeah. And, but there's this, uh, supposedly like, there's just like this beautiful and blissful thing about skydiving that's uh-huh. so scary, but yes, yeah, so beautiful. Yeah. And 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 that's what I'm trying to make it make sense that I I I'm not telling people to open their minds and leave all these different structures that they previously known. Yeah. But know that there's a balance between those things and how much more that you can open up to yeah. to to give like that kid some some acceptance and say that mm-hmm. you know what I don't think you're not making you're not you're making perfect sense probably yeah. like you know and give them that that actu- absolute love for for that person especially so that's what I'm trying to make is that the commonality between like something like that like uh, something that is so out of the norm that that we can give it a talking point but don't make it so irrational to the point where now this, you want to go back to the structures because you know that's all right. Ex- exactly. And there's a lot of people that just stick to their guns like that. And for many years, to be quite frank with you, I was very scared of, of death, of dying. Oh, Sometimes dude, I still that, am. Dude, and that, 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 I was talking to somebody and I talked to her. She asked me what was my, one of my biggest fears. And I was like, death. Like, it, and, and not from like my standpoint, but like I saw a family member, man, like they could die. And then I, I got scared. Uh, I'm just going to lay it on the table. I've been waiting to say this. Do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> well, bro, a lot of people ask me that. And I'm just kind of <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like, how do I answer that without, like, if, if there is a I've seen of, a ghost. 
a few times. That's scary. It, but it, it's super scary. Yeah, I, I don't, haven't seen a ghost, but I some ab, like supernatural things happen, and I believe that it has to do with energy. And yeah, and so of course. So because of that, I think ghosts are energy, yeah, and it's. it's I'm 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 quoting Avatar shit because Avatar <laughs> Avatar the Last Airbender now it's like getting into like you have good spirits and bad spirits and like good spirits end up having to be like um um the the spirits that are more calm and and um the darker spirits are the ones that are doing anarchy and having like these ideas the spirits that we're seeing you can see you can see good and bad spirits but you know that if you see a ghost and they're not they harm you it's a sense of energy that is there for a reason. And I'm just trying to create this reasoning and could, I'm, I'm trying to continue all that. But like, could, I, could you imagine if you just woke up and you're like, oh, I guess I'm a ghost now. Like you die and you're like, I guess that's my life now. I'm man, just a ghost. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird, but I'm, I don't, I'm definitely open to that possibility. I, I don't know if I would do like a Ouija board or anything like that, I, but I've done, I've done holy crap. <laughs> so that's another story. But I want to ask you this. Mm. If you could figure out one of the great world mysteries in your mind, I actually, I draw a blank and I, I was about to ask this earlier, but I forgot. Go ahead. One of the great world mysteries, you know, are ghosts real or aliens real is, um, is coronavirus political? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> one of the great, we'll get on that topic <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. This is uh, another good podcast for another time. <laughs> <laughs> um, which one would you choose? Or like what happens after you die? Like wh- which one would you choose? If you, one of the world's great mysteries, Whoa, man. Okay. Ancient civilizations. I think that's a good one. Like, I, I just think there's this devil, like the evolution that ends up happening that I feel like that, that, that stems from aliens. So because of that, I do believe that I want to believe that there is something else that is not an advanced version of us out there. So if it had to be that, it's kind of scary. Though. It is scary. It's very scary. I don't think people are ready for that scariness. And People are trying to make it unscary on TikTok and shit, but it's still super scary. Like a lot of the the worldly shit is cool. Like uh, I'm not saying like Bigfoot. I feel like Neanderthals and like Gigantopithecus was a big thing with like what we think Bigfoot was and like all these different conspiracies. But I think what really stems from like from the leap of where we think now and what will happen if we find out if there is some sort of alien life that isn't a future resemblance of us? Oh my God, man, that is going to question religion. That's going to question technology. That's going to oh, question. 100%. Some, so I think it's, it, I think it's that one. I think it's that. What one. if, okay. I was thinking about this actually, when I, I saw those, all those TikToks about the aliens, I was like, what if they all came down to earth? This would be the most interesting time. I mean, not to say other parts of history weren't interesting, but this would be the most interesting time for aliens to visit. So if they are real, those videos the other day, hundred percent makes sense. Like wouldn't they come down and be like, let's just see how the humans are doing. Like, let's see how the United States mm. is doing right now. Like, right. Like they would like, be creeping no, around the corner. They'd be like peeking their little heads out. Like, well, let's, uh, let's just like, look to see what's going on. Should we destroy them? Like, or should we keep them like, a reality TV show. You ever, <laughs> you ever, uh, you ever questioned or not questioned? Um, you ever thought about the idea of like us being a, like how we are so as a human we are mm-hmm. so advanced from all these different fucking animals? Uh, yes. And because I, I don't know the explanation, but if I theorize it when I'm on the influence, <laughs> um, uh, I, I what I, what I would end up saying is that we are. Um, we are a hybrid of some sort of future self that saw monkeys. <laughs> yeah, like some and, Scientology stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, we kind of like crossbreeded and made No, 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 made that us. makes 100% sense. And oh, so many TV shows and movies have been about that. And yes. Like 2001 Space Odyssey yes, kind of. Yes, that like, one, even comic books, even the, yeah. the, the Eternals and the, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how we're that commonality well, shout, between yeah. like the Deviants and the, uh, the yes, Eternals. Yes, and, and shout out to Marvel Eternals. Yes, that movie is going to be start, awesome. Like, dude, that's going to bring a whole new... How Get on that. What I don't know. <laughs> <That's> so crazy. <laughs> but like that, that right there, that movie Eternals is gonna be bring a whole new thought process to to the world about like where did we come from? Yep. And yep. I've been thinking about that so much. And the the thought of like this is gonna sound crazy, but the thought of like Dormammu or Galactus being real is kind of like pretty high up on the percentages for me. Like 
not in this reality, but like literally during quarantine or like during 2020, a few, like a, two months ago, NASA said that the possibility of having a, another reality exist is like almost a hundred percent. And yeah. they said the crazy thing about it, and it's super hard, it goes into like quantum physics and all this stuff. But like the super hard thing about like it to understand is that they, their reality is right next to us. Kind of think about, uh, uh, stranger things the yes. upside down. Yeah. Right. Right next to us, but they're going in opposite directions through time. They're still going forward in time, but in our timeline, they're going backwards, backwards. which is fucking crazy to think about. It's like what we're doing. Time to, is relative, time, but it's, that's it's the reason insane. why I don't think it's that crazy, but that's the only reason I can say, yeah, it is fucking crazy. And NASA said that NASA said like, yeah, this is pretty much a thing. Like they, they publicly announced that. What are they, what are they keeping from us in private? Like that's insane. And, if I had to guess, I'm going to guess it's like more, it's not just two lines. If I had to guess, it's more like an infinite lasagna of just <laughs> ever flowing layers of like, that's how I had to yeah, guess. Yeah, like, yeah. um, isn't there a movie about that? Or like, it's I, probably a documentary. Like, I, honestly, there's like, like, it's, it sounds like string theory or something, but like, it's like, probably. do you watch Rick and Morty? Man, I, <laughs> I, at some point I was going to have to talk about somebody with Rick, about Rick and Morty and Man, I man, even in a cartoon form, it doesn't matter how the fucking form is. It's just that's the easiest way to get people to sponge it into their minds. Yes, and so I, I think, I think that's, I think Rick and Morty was a, a gold, gold mine, man. They worked on Endgame. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yes, and they're gonna work on uh, Ant Man three, and like they worked on Ant Man two. But I'm it, sure. it is even, it, it's just because they know, they know that people think about this stuff. They know something else. Mm. Man, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I can say that like, it's their their influence in in the drug world or like you know like they're taking so many shrooms or smoking a bunch of weed. But like, there's some some why are why is there specific people that know about this and they they could spread it out this way? Why can't like we the just Simpsons, all know? bro? Man, can we just talk about the, that for a second. Like the whole Trump being president thing. Dude, that's all. Like, not even that. Like everything, dude. Have you seen? Hundred uh, percent. Do yes. you have Disney Plus? Yes, I do. Disney Plus has a section on there called Simpsons Predicts, and they have oh, yeah, yeah, every yeah, yeah, yeah. single episode every, every where episode they predicted where something. And that's only what Disney knows about. If you ask the if you ask the Simpsons creators, they probably tell you. And that's a weird show, dude. It's like that show's been around since before we were born. We were born, yeah. Yeah, and like 1989 was their first season, and they have since we were born they have predicted so many things and they're a staple in all of our lives like right. it's like you can't live in america i mean i'm sure you could your friend who doesn't have social media might yeah. not know who the simpsons are but even he probably oh, knows he who this is exactly he, he was a child once. He knows <laughs> exactly like, see we even even he knows who yeah. the simpsons are and he doesn't have social media it's like that was a staple it's almost like it's like is that the one thing americans have in common right. it's like we all know who the simpsons are yeah it's a, it's a weird thing to think about. Man, I I there was commonalities that I think that it doesn't matter if it's past life or not, but there's just commonalities that make sense in our minds, but yet we we don't we don't talk about it. And mm-hmm. that's that's the reason why like I love doing this, but it's just like that's the reason why I feel like images everything in the world that we live in right now. And oh, yeah. Yes. And and because of that, it, that would definitely limit what we can and can't talk about. And, and because of that, it, it, it really stuns shit like this. And I feel like I'm not even saying that they're all conspiracies, but yeah, we can't like, <laughs> like we, we talked about political, we talked about technology, we talked about film. It all stems from something that is ab- abnormally was conspiracy. And we talk about like, even the Epstein, the, the you know like the the Epstein yeah Ep- like all I haven't that. seen that by the way. I haven't I haven't either but like conspiracies kind of like stem from a, a sense of, of of truth and reality and it, it's That's just true. yeah and and because of that it's just like it's it seems to me that um right now with how fast that we we process information we want to come to a conclusion why because I think we we. Tr- we don't want to see what else is up there. We we love to circle ourselves with all these different boxes that we love to surround ourselves with. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what kind of like limits possibilities like this stuff. And not saying that this shouldn't be like the focal point, but we've also talked about like, like also um, what we can do to actually like succeed, you know, what to do when you fail and all these other things that happen in reality. And those are some attributes that people actually need. 
Do, do you find yourself um, every once in a while uh, being a part of like sensory overload? Like, do you find yourself having too much sensory overload? Like, I, it used to be worse for me in More college. More than now? Like, like, like now? in college, it was pretty bad for me. I don't know why. I think it's just the surroundings, though. Do you but think like, so? But like, do you ever get on like a, a like Netflix and you just see like, you're like, oh, I like that movie. Oh, wait, I like that movie too. And you're like, oh, I like that. Oh, wait, I need to watch that show. And you're like, oh, I need to watch. And you're like, I can't. There's too much. Too much. There's too much. Yeah. And I, like at one point, like that's why going back to you got to find your niche. Going back to that, like you, there's so much. Like, sure, you might love Rick. Like, we both love Rick and Morty, but yeah. like, are we gonna necessarily make a bunch of videos about it? Like, maybe not. Like, no. we might like talking about other things. Like, who knows? I mean, but if that's your niche, go ahead, go right. for it. But like, like, who's to stop you? But th- that's the thing where I I find myself. Maybe it's just my ADHD talking, but I find myself getting very distracted by like so many different things. And like, I get interested in so much like pop culture. I don't know if it's healthy. I don't know if it's not, but we uh, fall victim to it all the time. Exactly. I, I'm not even saying like, I don't like, I, I just think that's what, why is it that we like it? If that, that's more of the question, but I think going. it's healthy. I think it's kind of mentally healthy for you because um, going back to conspiracies, I mean, right. not trying to talk too much about conspiracies, but they, conspiracy theories and like just theory crafting in general. I mean, if you look at like all the YouTubers who talk about Marvel and DC, I mean, you could kind of say they're conspiracy theorists because they are talking about a, a I mean, conspiracy, but that's like a loose term to use, but they're talking about theories when it comes to like, what's going to happen next in like the MCU or in the DCEU. Like if they're talking about all of that and I think that's kind of healthy and like for the well-trained mind, um, that's just the next part of like being, just training your mind, just making your mind like stronger and 100%. like, yeah, just like cre- creating a more interesting thought, food for thought. Um, this, and, and you're not wrong. Uh, I think, and this is why I like one, how I kind of like set this up, especially cause this is your perspective on a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. the slice of life is just like how we talk about the generaliz- generalizations of what you have gone through in your life and how you kind of depict all these different things. Um, no, because that, that's, that there is some commonalities with even the way that I think. And we both kind of like come into a, a conclusion where we're like, huh, like we both think this, why? And so like, no, um, I don't know if there's a sensory over like, oh man, it's hard because I, I think I, I balance myself with, by how much I can intake and how much I don't. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, the sensory overload, I, I can try to use it all the way to um, even like people that have addictions, dude. Like people, people mm-hmm. have addictions. Like m- now more than ever, it doesn't matter if it's sex, doesn't matter if it's porn, doesn't matter if it's uh, uh, if it's um, food, if it's drugs, if it's alcohol, if mm-hmm. it's weed. It doesn't matter. There's yeah. like so many addictions now that I think um, I'm just trying to like make it a balance because th- I don't think all of those things are bad, but mm-hmm. I think knowing your your how much you can actually take as your individual self can make you think no i don't think it is a sensory overload yeah i don't watch a lot of netflix i don't watch a lot of stuff but i do love star wars i do love yeah, pop culture exactly, i do love yeah. everything that doesn't mean like I, I i oh my god like i gotta watch the new mandalorian like at this time i'm like no it's there i'll watch it when i watch it yeah and that's that's how i see it exactly now. Um, so because of that, I don't see it as a sensory overload, but that's just my discipline. Yeah. That's, that's, it seems like that you're sense? much more focused and, um, going, so I do want to talk about this cause I don't know how much time we have left, but I want to talk about this before we end everything. Um, and it is this, if you, for me specifically, I know I've mentioned a few times I, I have ADHD and it, it, that's hard to focus on one specific thing, sure, yeah. but with people with ADHD, you get mega focused in, like you get like super zoomed super in into like one thing. one thing. And I want to talk about this now is my craft is making mead and I know you make your own beer. Yes. So I kind of want to discuss okay. this right now. Okay. And I want to ask you, so I've done mead. Do you know what? Oops. No, you can move this around. This this okay. part, it, it won't hurt it, dude. Like, the, you can move this part right here, like all okay. this. Like, Sorry. you can grab it from this right here. Yeah. And then just move it. Yeah. yeah that's, Is that right, good? That, that's good right there. Okay. Sorry, I messed up. Yeah, don't worry, dude. Things okay, so, are indestructible, I think. <laughs> so going back to craft is uh, one thing. Do you know much about mead? Do you know what it is? It's, yeah. It's, uh... It's a, well, it comes from the fruit, right? No, uh, no, no. No. I brought it to the party. I think you tried it, but I don't, like, I... It doesn't. A lot of people don't know it because a lot of people think of beer when you think of mead, 
or like a type of like ale. I right? think of Skyrim when I think of mead. Yeah, Is so it's weird? a very well, it's okay. a very old fat. It's one of the it's oldest. Very old it, it's between that and wine. There's well, actually, between that and beer and wine, there's a bunch of debate on which one came first. And yes. mead, in my opinion, probably did come first. I think so too. I just think medieval-y mead was always a thing. It, it came from honey, so that's how oh, it, it's a honey okay. wine. So it was honey brewed. Yeah, yeah it, so. so it was brewed naturally through uh, finding. Um, the story goes is that there was a log on the ground and there was a honey combs in there, and it was, you know, the the log started uh, decomposing, and then that created bacteria, which created the. Uh, like yeast Kinda type, like like yeast yeast type, type thing, thing yeah. to create alcohol yeah. and they were hungry and they were foraging and um back then you know they were uh they would move around a lot yes. the uh, hunter gatherers yes. so they would be like oh look this is some honey this kind of let's let's drink let's, it let's, drink let's, it. let's, let's, let's see what happens thirsty. like and we don't know what we're doing they're like oh i'm drunk and then they like let's do that again yeah. so then that's when you start learning how to make it and i was wondering like did you like? Did you start off like with wine? Like wine's very easy to make. Same with mead. It's basically just honey, water, yeast. Did you start off making wine, or did you go straight to beer? Because bre- beer is another monster. It's that a I wanna... different monster, man. Uh, okay, so I think it goes with now we. Li- uh, this is why I'm saying like now we live in a distinct world where we like individuality, and because of that, it, it brings up beer having more individuality more than ever, mm-hmm. and. And um, I never started off with the idea of wine first. My my roommate he he's a con like he's a connoisseur of like bourbon and whiskey. Mm. And we were talking about like mm-hmm. like man, we dude, if we could le- legally if could legally make, legally make yeah, some stuff. Oh, 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 right, <laughs> that's what we're saying. Like, and um, so he he's done a lot. Of that. He's more of the expert on that stuff. I just love the aesthetic that comes with it, and I can bring that to the table. So. What ends up happening is uh, me and him, we just kind of started, we were drunk and we were just kind of talking about like, like, dude, we should make, we should start making our own beer. Like, like, so, uh, like at the, at the end of it, we, we had this idea after like, I started branching out on like the IPAs, the, the stouts, all this other stuff on beer. And I was like, he was intrigued by it. And then we were just like, dude, we should practice, we should practice with like, try and let do our like like these brand named ones and then just start making them and mm-hmm. pra- start practicing and then later on we started like experimenting and started putting in like honey we started putting in cinnamon oh, we started you use putting, honey? yeah we well, like, if you use honey technically it could be considered could, a meat yeah like, maybe it, it, it was an ale that we did and uh, we, we were just like we were like we were just experimenting man and i was like we should take them to a party to see what people think and uh that's when we were just like Oh my god! And it, I, 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 we, I don't know if you. I was already I don't drunk. Remember. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, everybody tried I it. I never tried it. I definitely didn't try it. I didn't I try don't remember, mead, but I, don't, I would love to try it. Yeah. We're, we're gonna have an episode of just trying. Dude, shit. I love homebrewing. If if anyone out there, like especially for men out there, I mean, women, you can go ahead and do it too. I mean, I, it just it seems like most guys are interested in it more. Like from what I've, experienced. I don't want to shun women because I think women have like a big. Yeah, they have a big knack for this, but I think they. But like they, they can for they guys, can I think like for guys to find a hobby, it's mm-hmm. like a, it's a very mm-hmm. appealing one. I'm not to say like like you said like you know go for it if you're, go if you're for it. yeah, yeah if you're 100%. a woman whoever you know whatever anybody can do it but it, specifically specifically for men you know a lot of guys don't have like that one craft, craft that they do and a lot of guys like to drink and it's like why not make your own like right like it's you love drinking thing. beer yeah, like guys like, love make drinking your own. beer like, like the boys like, come on yes. like the boys love drinking the yeah. beer and why not make your own? And I would love to make my own beer. It's it's kind of so you did it the smart way, where you you bought a kit, right? <laughs> yeah, we bought yeah. a kit, and we were that, that, that's how we started practicing. And then we finally see. Kind of I'm so there. like I don't know. I don't know if it's me being like hard headed or we're like just, we're just guys. We love like fucking yeah. like oh we can make it in this barrel, and then we're just gonna whisk it and just yeah, dude, like uh, that's uh, that masculine part of us where we exactly just like, we can do it. Like we're I just guys. wanted to like, like, and I took a lot of cooking classes in high, in college, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I'm very much about like I want to like the maybe measurements. It's a pri- the maybe it's a pride thing for me, but I really want to like just be like, yeah, that's mine. Like I created, I created like every shit. ingredient. Like, Everybody like, looks at you like, whoa, like man, yeah, so like, dude, I picked out the hops for that. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like it's good. <laughs> I did that. Like, it, it, where, it was, where do you get your ingredients? Where'd you go? Ah, dude, we just kept, we either go online, we go to like, um, you know, Winter Garden. They have like a lot of, um, yeah, they the have homebrew uh, places. Yeah, well, yeah, they have that, but they also have like a a, a market. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they have a marketplace where you can actually go do it. But it, dude, it's like it's like anything else. You just got to go online. You got to figure out what you're trying to do. What you're mm-hmm. 
And from there, you just like, if there's some stuff that you can get from the store, you can get the store. And if there's just stuff that you actually need to get, like, was it costly? No, like for anybody who wants to start out, I think you should practice first. Like, I think you should just get any type of like, um, any, any type of thing, like, um, not get like a name brand, something and, uh, make it, make it, make it, uh, like just, an IPA. Yeah. Like- yeah. And, and make it just so you know, like how the levels work, how, how much this, how much water you're actually going to yeah. need. That makes just, sense. Maybe I should just do, like do it that way. I, dude, you make it whichever way you want. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just like, even See, the, I was going to full send. I was going to like get like a three gallon bucket. Like, uh, <laughs> but see, that's what I'm saying. It, the way you make it is also a sense of art. Like I think like, Oh yes. Once 100%. It, well, if it's good and then people are like, Whoa, how'd you make it? It's like, oh, I did it this way, you know? And then you just kind of like flex out on like the way that I, I've made it out of a bucket, you know, just kind of like, don't worry. It's all, it's all clean, but <laughs> so like, like if you, yeah, and I highly recommend if you're into you know baking or anything like that, dude. Try, yeah, try, try home brewing. Dude. Try like, it's a it's a fantastic way to just like relieve kind of like take your mind off things, like relieve some stress. Just like don't think about it. It's almost like like I, it's kind of sound cheesy, but it's like, like caring for a kid because it yeah. is a living thing. It's like yes. a pet. Yes. And it's like you have to do like measurements on it and yes. you have to like check it, make sure it's good. You have to feed it like yes. a kid. And um, the thing about that is uh, I actually have a, a funny joke about making bread. And uh, my roommate used to make bread during uh, our CP. Did, did they have like a hole in the wall where they fucking put it in there? It, like, <laughs> no, 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 no. It was in the in CP it. kitchen. Oh, so I was God, like, in, like dude, yeah. The and, CP uh, kitchen. Let's not get started on that. <laughs> and, uh, and so you made bread. And, I, and there's a funny joke that goes, it's like, if you ever have a friend that randomly starts making bread, like ask them how they're doing, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's so funny. Like, just check up on <laughs> it. Like, just are check they, up on your friend. Are you okay, like, man? are you okay, dude? Like, you're making like, bread. Like, do you realize you're making bread? Like, <laughs> is there something you need to tell us? Like, are you? Okay, but not man. to knock baking. I suck at baking, by dude, the way. I suck. I'm a I griller, man. I, I think we should just stick with like yes, cookouts, cooking, cooking, cooking. Like, I can cook. Like, yeah, like burgers, like steak. What do you? How do you want it? <laughs> but when it comes to like numeric shit, this is like that's this is close it's a to science. Like, it's a science, bro, dude. It's a science. So at that point, I think we just as men, I think we just love burning shit and like. Okay, let's just make meth. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Walter White. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I just love making handcrafted stuff, dude. A hundred percent. There's there's a knack for that. There's a knack for for um homemade shit now it's just i think we're just trying to stray we're trying to get away from this whole processing quarantine thing. you said yes. quarantine is a big thing yes man and so because of that i think i think we're finding natural ways to come back yes. to 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 reality uh to to a, a simpler reality yeah this and, the, and bro for one we're probably gonna lose a lot of this uh I, i'm filming right now from my phone but um don't worry like we're still recording we can okay, we cool. can go as long as we want we cool. don't give a fuck okay cool but um for the people that are watching, I'm so sorry. Like, uh, something happened. Oh, I don't have my box for my freaking camera, so I ran out of battery, and no, it okay. sucks. But right now, we are still getting this valuable information that is perfect on audio for every podcaster because this is a podcast before an audio or a video. So we're going to keep going. doesn't matter how long it takes, man. You are – like, every, people are thinking – from what I like about this is that you one, you're a very inspirational guy. You. you have you have a sense. We're out of shit, so we. No, it's, it's all good. I have a decent buzz going on. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, this is probably. crazy. <laughs> we'll, we'll take out that four roses later on. But what I'm saying um, is home, home, handcrafting. Handcrafting. There's some there's something right now that people are clamoring for, and this mm-hmm. this goes back to even the foundations of how we see how we see um, reality right now. Yes. How we, how people are clamoring of loneliness. Loneliness is a big, yes. big thing Huge in America. Right now. And, and right now it, it's clamoring back to the family essence of what, what uh, um, people want is a closeness with people around them. Can I just stop you right there? Just Go real ahead. quick, just two seconds. Sure. Do For you? anyone out there, I'm doing you a favor. If like you said, loneliness, yep. Huge problem in America. You might not even know you're lonely. There's a great video on YouTube called Loneliness. Just look it up. Shout out to that video. I don't know who made it, but great video. Just look that up on YouTube. It will do you a favor. I may right, continue what you're saying. Um, and because of that, I think I think that stems to how people decision make. But there's something going on right now where um, we are going to our past, and this is doesn't matter. It goes to fashion. It goes to. Uh, uh, video games. It goes to any sort of social um, 
thing. Mm -hmm. It's we were we are clamoring for things in the past because it was simple. It was it was uh, it was clean. It was it was perf not perfect pure. but pure. pure. It was pure. pure. And how we talked about how how movies and film come from a pure standpoint back yep. in the past that now it's so processed, so artificial, so disgusting that we are coming, we're clamoring back to a reality yeah. where this was 100%. all a thing. Yeah. And because of that, I think, I think, I think that this whole revolution that's going on right now with um, what 2020 is right now, it's weird, but I think it's going to go back to, the people are going to clamor back to, what they know mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter i have traditional things like as a hispanic but um i still hold true because of those things those foundations i think i want to pass on to yeah, generations 100 percent. but there's so other things like like let's just say like music like uh um fashion um uh, the way people lived back in the past people are going to want to go to that stuff you, you ever seen tiny house the minimalist all this other shit like, oh yeah my brother loves that i love that shit too man and i think i think people are learning from that stuff and people are like saying we don't need all this shit to be happy we'd rather have experiences and people had experiences a long time ago before social media before exactly, yeah. all these different things and i think it's going to go back to that, I think so, but it's going to take a, a crumbling down of something. I don't know what that is, but that's where, I, that's it, where my head We're is. going through almost in a way, I've said this a few times, um, as a positive of 2020 is we're almost going through another renaissance in a way. Whoa, and, that uh, is a awesome way to put it. Dude, I am going to use that. Dude, 100%. I'm and so I'll, I'll explain it right now. You probably already know where I'm going, but for the audience, mm, yes. I'll explain it for you. Um, so during, during uh, quarantine, I actually took up a lot of... Uh, homemade things like I started making my own pasta sauce never thought in my life I would make my own pasta sauce but I was like you know what I'm hungry for spaghetti and I am doing absolutely nothing right now I have all day to sit inside I'm just gonna make my own pasta sauce so I, I did it from scratch went to the store bought like literally a product of Italy like some diced tomatoes and like a bunch of different ingredients and made my own sauce not only that is I took up oil painting. I have never oh. oil painted in my life. I saw, I saw, during, I saw you were a painter, man. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm a sketcher. <laughs> I'm a sketcher. Like I, I yeah. love the black and white, man. I love when I didn't mean to stop you there. No, but you're I good. just like you're the, 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 Oh my God. I can just like, yeah. Sh -sh 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 like with a, like coal, like, well, yes, I started, Oh my God. I left all my stuff at home, but, um, I, I wanted to get into painting again. I, I, I feel like a, a people are artists, a, a people who are artists, man, clamor, everyone's dude, an artist. hundred yeah. percent. It doesn't matter the way you do it, but like, um, as an oil painter and uh, like, I just think that takes a lot of finesse. Like it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of patience, dude. Uh, a lot yes. of patience, bro. And so something about, like I said, we're going through a Renaissance and let me just explain this for anyone who doesn't know. During the uh, 13th century, so like the 1200s, uh, there was the Black Plague. And it went on for... I'm going to refill on this. Oh, okay. And it went on for a few hundred... I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. A few hundred years. It went off and on. So like the Black Plague would come and then it would leave again. It would come and then it would leave again. And um, so horrible, horrible things were happening in Europe and uh, other places, um, mo mostly Europe was where the black plague was happening and thousands and thousands of people were dying more than i'm not even I, I don't know the numbers but if i had to guess probably more than covid and it happened off and on for a few hundred years and then finally the black plague ended and in the early 1400s was the renaissance the start of the renaissance and it came after thank you sir and it came after one of the darkest times in human history, especially for, for Europeans. It was one of the worst times. They were building mass graves. Like they were digging mass graves for people because they were dying so fast. Your skin melted off your bones if you had the plague, dude. Think wow. about that. Holes in your body would just appear out of nowhere. That's yeah. why it was called the Black Plague because yeah. you'd have black holes on you. Oh. And yeah, and then they dug mass graves and they would burn all the bodies. That was their way of getting rid of it. They had no vaccine or anything like that. They just burnt all the bodies. Bro, it, and, um, yeah. and, and then the Renaissance came, like I was saying, the 1400s. Yes. And yes. the most beautiful pieces of artwork, literature, the most beautiful architecture, all of that came from right after the Black Plague. And that, that's what we're going through right now, kind See, of. And that's what I mean is that I think there's like a, supposedly like some sort of disaster that has the Black Plague. I, think, yeah. I don't something, And I think that might be covid if if I'm 
going into this, like some yeah, sort of yeah, thing. yeah. But right after that, man, there's gonna be some sort of beautiful renaissance that's gonna end up happening. And I yes. think I think the 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 vamp the revamp of technology and AI and all this stuff is gonna be accustomed to our creativity as humans. 100%. How how we see how we see uh, creativity is gonna be like. Uh, it's going to be a burst of, of yeah. so much of creativity. And I think TikTok one is going to be one of those big things. <laughs> yes. But one of the, one of the other things is that I think anybody right now that is going into this form of reality that they need to, they need, there needs to be creativity in their exactly. minds. Do it, do it right now. Exactly. is like, I think it, it's the, one of the golden opportunities to do it and write a book, write, write a book, write a book, uh, write a book, dude, paint, like artistic things come from a podcast like right now dude this is art right now exactly yeah and, and that that right there stems from how we see um art like as creative uh, creators mm-hmm. as 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 pure as it might seem that's what it that's what it stems down to yep and it, okay go oh, no, 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 you continue what you're saying dude but i'm just saying like how all of that is going to stem from from something bad that's going to happen but i think a lot of people are prepared for that i think mm-hmm. so and um so one of my favorite actually all-time tv shows i'm just going to plug this in right now and uh netflix i always tell people check out the show it's a little bit vulgar but if you like 1920s roaring 20s type era and with gangsters peaky that's blinders my bro dude my roommate I, I, <laughs> it's so, such a good show i have this vintage way right now that i'm gonna I, i'm gonna have a photo shoot for and i and he's like dude you remind me of somebody off of picky blinders with the dude, hat Peaky with, blinders bro. it's so good this guy man. tommy shelby he's the yes. i'm not gonna ruin the story it's there's six seasons so it's a long yeah, story i'm on the but, third episode of the first season oh so, really yeah, dude, it gets not, so much better it gets so much 100 percent agree and uh, the main character you know him uh thomas shelby yes he one of the greatest things there's a <laughs> technical, <laughs> technical difficulties over yeah. here with our photographer so there's a um, there's this YouTube channel, very good channel. Um, I, I can't remember the name. It's something about like uh, how like basically how to how to incorporate different parts of your life with like charm or like how to be like how to be more charming or how to yeah. be more inspirational or how to be inspirational a better, comes from charm, I think. Yeah, like how to be just a better person. Yes. And one of his was talking about like how to be a leader basically like how to be like one of the best leaders and how to be like um that type of person that can basically tell people like what to do and they will listen to you matter what right and one of his greatest things is he can take like he can most people say like take lemons and make them into lemonade right he takes moldy lemons like lemons that have been sitting Sitting in cow shit And he takes the worst case scenarios and uses that. And he says, you know what? I'm not going to use this to, to uh, hurt myself. I'm going to use this to better myself. And that he's is... the king. Dude, he's the king. At, like something bad happens to me. He's like, I'm glad that happened. I'm going to make it better. I'm going to literally take that and use it to my advantage. Yeah. And he's one of the best persons who does that. And like, uh, they also talk about um, the guy, uh, what's his name, from Mad Men. I haven't seen Mad Men. Well, what's the main character? Have you uh, seen it? It's not Michael Fassbender, but I know uh, it's... Uh, you know who I'm talking yes, about. Yes, he's... Wow, he was in one of the shows. He's in one of the episodes of uh, Black Mirror, and I'm trying to think of his name, but I can't. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, but anyways, if you watch the show Mad Men, you know the main character. Yes, and um, he is great with confidence. And so the episode on YouTube about confidence was all about him. And so if you like, if anything that you're striving for, like you were trying to be a more confident person, or like any of these aspects in your life, like there are ways to do it. And like, there are easy solutions. Like I watched these videos and I was like, it's a YouTube video. Like it's not going to help me in my life. I took away life lessons from these YouTube videos being like, that makes so, so much, much sense. sense. And I'm just like, if you apply these small little things, one little video like that can change. Your, I learned like, intermittent your fasting life. from YouTube. Man. Yeah. From YouTube. Yep. Yeah. Or podcasts. Uh, like. Yes. Uh, and I think it was just accumulation of things that I saw, I like videos, but it's just the way I learned. Like so many people, cheers, brother. Cheers. Yeah, second second round. This is a full rose, so. I figured with some the water, it would give it, it, give it some, some, good some air. Yeah. Some good so shit. we're just like, all right. But uh, so, but you're not wrong, man. I I think, I think it stems from um, all these different ideas. And I... I want to clamor to people that are thinking that you don't need charisma. You don't need to know how to deal with people Mm -hmm. to, to, to tell them like, dude, no, you relationships are everything. And it doesn't matter if they're intimate or not. You just know how to have to know how to deal with people in a positive light. Like it doesn't matter how it is, but these, the ways that you learn these, these, these ways, I don't know if they, if, 
if this was a thing all throughout life or is this just like our lives mm-hmm. but right now if this is working this this has got to be because it's working for the right reasons exactly so yeah. that's all i that that's all i can say for that especially with this year in general i mean like sure horrible things have happened this year yeah we can all agree this year took a shit on everyone basically 100 percent. um man. but some some great things have happened like I, you know how many probably how many small businesses have been i mean sure small businesses has, have been destroyed because of the whole COVID, COVID but you know how many small businesses have already been started because people were inspired during quarantine like i can't sit on my ass all day like no. I, like this they're they're thinking logically and they're like you know what this is going to end. Like eventually this is going to end end. and and life's going to go back to normal. I can't sit on my ass. Like I'm doing right now during COVID. Like I have to do something with my life, bro. It's crazy, man. I, and and it doesn't for you. That's your perspective. Like everybody's Mm -hmm. learning something different. It doesn't matter. Like if it's outsource or insource, if it's like a mental thing or if it's a physical thing, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, um, a lot of people, COVID was a blessing for people that need to be improved in some sort of way. It doesn't matter what it is. And, uh, at some fucking point, there there is going to be a time whenever uh, we are going to look back and say, we are great. I'm kind of grateful for all everything that yeah. just kind of happened. Yeah. Like, I, 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 like, f- fuck, furloughed right now, dude. Um, relationships, uh, m- mental stability with depression, anxiety. Exactly, exactly. Uh, physical wellness with the way that you, uh, you hold yourself, uh, like, with muscle, like, uh, discipline on eating, everything, man. I, it's just like, like you realize everything gets stripped away. What do you have? And exactly. it's, and it's like, it's like, are you okay with looking at yourself in the mirror and saying that you're okay with yourself? Like, whoa. Well, like, that is, that that's, is, yes. That's, that's, that's huge. A big one. Or like my favorite is, uh, if you met yourself, uh, if you were 10 years old and you met your older, like yourself now, yourself, yeah. would you like yourself? That's man. a big one. But let me just say this though, this year, like I, I'm a big, like, uh, I like everything happens for you for a reason. Like I'm a big uh, supporter of that kind of like, sometimes I'm off and on. I'm like, ah, screw it. Just I don't, depending on what's going on, depending on what's going on in my life. But sometimes I'm like, yeah, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And, um, for instance, if I would not have moved here, I would have stayed in Colorado. I would have been fired from my job. I would have been paying way overpriced rent with no sort of income at all. Yeah. Who knows where I would have been? Yeah. I would have been halfway across the country, like hardly any friends and no family over there. So I would have been screwed, right? On a whim, I was just like, my friend was like, you want to move to Florida? Do you want to, um, I'm about to move there. I just graduated college. You want to be my roommate? And I was like, let's go, dude. Like, I, I was I like, I, I don't, I don't have anything holding me back. Let's just, yeah. let's go. Yeah. And like, I loved it there. I loved living in Denver. I loved Colorado, but I was like, my friend was like, dude, like he, we were about to move to Vegas. Actually, we were thinking oh. about moving to Vegas. Yes. And he was like, we were on the phone. It's my best friend, my roommate. Vegas shout Raiders, bro. Uh, shout yeah, out to Jack, yeah, my, my roommate, one of my best friends. And he was like, he's like, I don't think I'm ready to move to Vegas. I was like, really? And he's like, I think I want to, like, something's telling me like, I want to go back to Disney. Like I'm not done there. Like he's, he did two CPs. And so he's like, my journey hasn't ended, ended there. Like I need to go back for something's telling me I need to go back. Right. And so he's like, you want to be my roommate? I was like, sure. I come here, I get a decent job. I start working for uh, Lowe's Sapphire Falls, which is a universal hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get furloughed. I literally only worked for a week. Get furloughed. That company's wonderful, dude. They they paid me for two weeks during, uh, for t- technically four weeks of pay during, yeah. during, during the whole, during, during the, the lockdown. COVID. A lot of people didn't get that. A lot of people didn't get it. If I would have lived in Denver, like I said, I would have been fired. Would have got fired I would have been man. $0 on the table and I would have been fired. So it worked out in the end. Like I was skeptical. I was like, uh, should I be moving back to Florida? I don't know. Then I moved back to Florida. It all worked out in the end. I mean, sure, Corona was bad. COVID, I don't wish it upon anyone. No, 100%. But, but it happened. And no, it happened, yeah. for, I feel like, for a reason. Exactly. I would have never met you. Exactly. Dude, <laughs> you're on the podcast right now, man. It's crazy. Man, you're not wrong, man. I, I think it's it's a admirable and very like loving thing to look at everything that is positive in the world yes. so the, to look at the light from this sh- shitty darkness that's that takes a lot of power to do and not a lot of people can do that and that that i envy you for that for t- for <laughs> i one, was born two. in the dark <laughs> <laughs> but dude it's just it's just crazy to me how much how much a, a lot can change a lot can think a lot of things can change and and in and, and a and, a yes. heat of a moment. I mean, and look at, I, I don't, want to, don't want to bring it up again, but like, look at Chadwick Boseman, man. Like, the, man. who knew that was going to happen, bro? Yeah. Like, that's so, so you bring sad. it up, man. We'll talk about it again. Like, we'll, we'll have more so perspective after sad, that. Bro. Dude, I know, man. So sad. And, 
this year, man. What did we do wrong? Somebody needs to return the slab right now. Bro, and it, it was like Little Richard, like the, the one of my favorite, man. One of my favorite. Little uh, Richard? Little Richard, man. He's, uh, well, Saturday night, I just got paid. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Like, um, a long tall Sally, like all those times. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big 50s guy. Did so he pass away this year? He passed away this really? year. Really? Yeah, no man. way. Like, uh, a lot of people, man. Uh, it, it's just, it's just so... It's just so weird, man. Especially like I think of like when Bozeman died, and and he one of my favorite movies that I, I remember growing up with, or like just Forty Two. I was I'm a big, was I'm, so a big good. I'm a big yeah. baseball guy, and Jackie Robinson, and yeah. how uh, we we were celebrating Jackie Robinson. I was watching the Rangers, and we were cel- celebrating. Uh, they were celebrating Jackie Robinson Day that day when he passed away. I know that was so weird. And it, and it, was, it, was, it was so weird. weird. I and, saw it on TV, and I was like, like I already knew he passed away, man. and I saw it on TV. They were in Forty Two, and I was like. Is that for Jackie Robinson yeah. or is that for Chadwick? Chad, I was like, this is so weird, it, dude. It, it was a weird dilemma right there, man. It was just like, man, like, cancer is a bitch. Like, I, oh and, I, and, and I'm <clears throat> saying that, like, I'm so grateful I, I'm not going through that. But at the same time, like, seeing other people struggle through that, it's just like, fuck, man. Like, I, that's that sucks. And Bozeman yeah. being such an inspiration to the entertainment community. Oh, my God. Like. To everyone. To Dude, this is always gonna be yes. like that, that for people that don't know what I'm doing. But it's the the cross, the the the, the, way that, the black cross, panther yeah. cross. Yeah, like it's just it's just a, a a thing that has been admired in all of entertainment and and uh, oh my god, the movie him just being a bose like the king of t- king T'Challa of of uh, Wakanda and just it's just like it it just no matter if it's real or not, it was real for all these people. And it was, it, it's just so, man, like I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it, but it's just like, it gets to people. It should get to people to, to, to know how much that has, has influence, man. Like it meant a lot to him too. Yeah, man. I mean, it meant a lot to him. He, like, he, he played roles yeah. that were inspiring. Doesn't matter what yeah. movie, but all those roles. He went to the hospitals, the children's hospitals, visited kids with terminal cancer, knowing, knowing he Dude, had that's terminal so sad, cancer. Like, that is that's, so sad. That's so sad, man. Did I, you know, this is off topic, but did you know if we were immortal, we would all die of cancer? That's crazy. Yeah, isn't that I didn't, No, I didn't know that. Yeah, because eventually you, your cells can only split a, a certain amount of times, yeah. and eventually they run out of that, and they start just oh. mutating, and you would die of cancer. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. I... I mean, we're not it's immortal, bitch. but it's, it's a, a bitch. Yeah, it's a bit, I, mean, and I, I don't that's know. That's why man. our bodies are just a vessel, man. And we're just he a- he definitely for the last five years, six years, as when we got the we got the uh, announcement of him being Chadwick Boseman. From that point, he lived. You mean Black, Black or Panther. Uh, or Black Panther? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he lived this this amazing life to 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 inspire to be uh, more than what you can be especially like no one knew he was sick and that's what it baffled me was just like like a lot of people i saw this video i saw this video like early on in the beginning when uh covid mm-hmm. was uh, and we saw chadwick boseman being he was so skinny he was so skinny people he were was, just, I did see and, that. and really people sad. people were were very uh concerned about his health and stuff and i was like my god man like is it is it covid yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't even know he was sick. I did see that. And I remember thinking like, oh. Yeah. Like, and it was concerning. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, oh my God. Like, I don't know what to say to that. It's just crazy, man. If you were an actor, if you were a f- up and coming, like maybe you did one or two movies, kind of like Chadwick did sure. 42, you know, great movie. Okay. Would you want to be a part of a huge franchise that might last 10 years of your life? 100%, man. I, if it, it? The thing is, I just think uh, like if... I don't know, man. I, being a minority, I would say like I would want to play like a the a Mexican role model to a lot of these people, like Guillermo del Toro, man. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, when I heard his speech, uh, like uh, one of the Oscars, and I was just amazed by how much like he, this dude does, and I'm, I'm like I'm just amazed by so many uh, just Hispanic actors, mm-hmm. and I'm just like I want I would want to definitely be a part of that sort of movement that can inspire a kid mm-hmm. coming Isn't, up. Isn't uh, Miles Morales half Hispanic? He's he's half Hispanic, yes. He, he, uh, Miles Morales is the is a uh, Puerto Rican. He's a uh, oh, okay. he's or he's a uh, 
Yeah, he's Puerto Rican. I can't wait for live action. Yeah, man. Live, dude. I know. He's, he's going to be so dope. I hope he shows up, and uh, fingers crossed. I doubt it'll happen, but Multiverse of Madness. Oh, oh man, that's going to be so dope. Uh, the one that I, the one met big Mexican actor that I would, I, dude, I would love to play Ghost Rider. The, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the Cholo t- type of one with the low rider. And, um, yeah. I forgot his name, uh, Reyes. And um, he would be a really cool uh, attribute and to, to play in, a, in any future franchise. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that is, especially going into the supernatural realm, I feel like there's so much you can play with. Speaking of uh, Hispanic superheroes, you know what reboot they need? And I think they're actually doing it. Mm. Zorro. The mask. I literally, dude, I, I got the Legend of Zorro. Dude, I think they're Goodwill, rebooting bro. it. Have you and heard about that? No, bro. But I feel like one. I love Antonio Banderas, man. He's Hell great. Yeah. But like, dude, if they well, I shouldn't this, say a reboot. I think they're bringing him back. Him? Yeah. As Lazaro. Yeah. Like older, like think about like. Uh, if they pass the torch. Think about like thing. Ben Affleck, older Batman. Yeah, that would be so dope. Yes. Like, I'm, and I, he would probably pass the torch to someone else. Maybe, but, but one, he is old now. So that's the reason why he I'm is, saying like yeah. he could pass it on. But I do love that idea of passing the torch to something like that. Because I saw the with the, with the Ghost Rider, like uh, uh, what's his name on the horse, bringing it to, to uh, in, in that first Ghost Rider with Nicholas Cage. I'm, I'm not familiar with much Ghost Rider. Well, I've seen. There's so many Ghost Riders, right? Yeah, yeah. So one Ghost Rider was on the horse. He's the old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the old one that yeah. passes the torch to yeah. uh, who we know. Uh, Johnny Blaze is the yeah. is the Ghost Rider. I, I know, Cage. Yeah. So like, it's just like, it's just like insane that like it's not really passing the torch because you kind of like you're you're in inferno and you're you you he, sign your you sign your soul yeah. to the devil. But it's just cool the nod that you get, especially like yeah. like you don't see you're not gonna see the horse Ghost Rider anymore. You're gonna see this new. And improve Johnny Blaze one. Well, you know, with Multiverse of Madness, you might that might be how they bring in Ghost Rider into the MCU. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. might, they might bring in Nicholas Cage, Dude, like, or or the one from uh, uh, Agents of Shield. Oh, they were yeah, thinking about yeah, bringing yeah, him, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, they were thinking about ki- like killing him off and bringing someone else and like passing the torch to someone else. Yeah, Bobby Ray's was a good. He was a good. Yeah, uh, he was a good um, a Ghost Rider. I love that Ghost Rider. The Mohawk of Fire thing. Oh yeah, the leather jacket. The 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 muscle the American muscle car that he has that's they, like a, I wanted to get into it like I I started watching so I watched Daredevil I watched Jessica Jones and then something happened where I was like why can't they reference these freaking movies like I was about to start Agent Shield watch watch every single episode but then they they, they were literally like nope we're not gonna do it they're like they were like they're related but then they're like actually we're gonna reboot them and we're gonna like I don't know it's like is it related is the, Agent as Agents of Shield okay so the I'm going off of, don't quote me on this because I just know off of Collider. Um, my, Mark Pohlmutter, he was the one that was in charge of all of the Netflix uh, TV series. Uh, the there He was the one that was in charge of that. A, the AMC, or not AMC, the ABC Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was uh, a, a direct correlation with the movie, the, the big movies. Mm-hmm. That is why when you see Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it relates more to the movies than it does to the Netflix series. Okay. Um, what ended up happening was that there was a falling out between Mark Palmer and uh, Kevin Feige. Yes, that the, yeah. That the, the, uh, now the head of Honcho of Disney, of, of fucking, wow. Who is, who's uh, that? Well, they just got a new pre- uh Are you talking about uh, Kevin not, Feige? Yeah, not Kevin Feige. They just got a new Bob Shapek, Bob. Yeah, uh, Bob Shapek. But before Bob Shapek. It was, oh, okay. Uh, we're, oh, we're drawing a blank, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Oh my God, I'm I'm gonna be hated for this, but he he gave the direct rights to Kevin Feige and said, you know what, you you come directly to me if you want something, I I'll definitely give it to you. Finally, they got rid of Mark Palmutter, but Netflix still owned the rights to all these characters until the con- the contract for for Luke Cage and um, Iron Fist is finally gonna go back in about a certain amount of months. So really, yeah. So see, I was so excited for the. I love Luke Cage. I I do too. I Dude, I love Iron Fist. I, see, I I so. See, I'm so mad at myself, but at the same time, I kind of justified it because I was so ready to full send and watch every, every single, single one of the of of Defenders. the Netflix oh, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. Netflix. Yeah. But then they started saying like, "Well, they're not going to be an end game," and they're yeah. like, "Well, they're not going to be this." And I was like, "Then what's the point?" Yeah. Like, and I just yeah. got so upset, and I was just like, "Come on, they, I, those characters need more justice." I don't know, man. I I like the idea of it, of those being grun- like grungy and very edgy. They are, yes, and, and I. I especially for the punisher like you won't oh i won't God. i won't get a punisher that i would love in the mcu so yeah. because of that i love the idea of them being by themselves um to reference them i think that's gold and i think they need to do that but they for them to. but for them to be in a amc like a mcu movie 
that's that's tough especially like now that they have deadpool i think i was just gonna say yeah now now that they have deadpool now that's that's gonna be a whole different dilemma dude deadpool and punisher together oh man man that's and that's gonna be blade yes (laughs) oh dude blade i feel like that movie's gonna happen eventually dude but how's it gonna happen is it gonna be a straight to disney plus they're gonna make a rated r they're gonna make i feel like here's my speculation i could be wrong about this but i think they're gonna make some type of streaming service that's gonna be marvel content for rated r yeah but or just rated r in general and they just rated r in general maybe you Fox to produce it. I don't know, um, but they're gonna what? What they're gonna do is I'm hoping we're gonna get all these cool badass characters like Deadpool. Right. Uh, we're gonna get like a Blade and like all these characters that should be rated R. Yeah, and they're gonna have their own team up like Punisher, and hopefully they bring back yes. the Punisher from Netflix. Yes. Uh, come on, he was awesome, one hundred percent. And um, and they could even add like Ghost Rider in that. Like, but Ghost Rider is more of like a cosmic character, 100%. anyways. Yeah, so yeah. they could add him anywhere, anywhere, any. He could be with the Ga- Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, for or all Silver that. Surfer. Oh man! Don't even give a start on summer. That's one of my favorites, man. I yes, love, I, I just got it. the Fortnite skin, by the way. Oh, man. dude, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. Um, but what I was saying is, I think they're gonna have their fun in their rated R universe, right. and it's gonna be great, and it's gonna be adult filled and everything. Yeah. And I, I think Marvel's gonna let us have that little cookie. Disney, you mean? Disney. Like, Disney's gonna let yeah, us have, have that little cookie of a rated R Marvel cinematic universe, 100%. and they'll probably just name it something different, like Marvel Dark or so, like something like something that. Like that. Yeah. I don't know, something Marvel off the rails or something. I don't know who knows what the Deadpool universe. Anyways, like that, yeah. and then hopefully if they do like Secret Wars or something like that, they can bring these characters in and I could just imagine Deadpool on the big screen with Spider-Man, Oof. with Hulk, with Oof. Thor and just being like trying to curse, like say Falcon's Captain America and he's like trying to curse and then Falcon's like language and then he's like, and then he's like beeping out all his curse words and all you hear is just like a long beep and like, like it, yeah. I think it'd be hilarious. 100%. I, one, I think I think Ryan Reynolds being Deadpool is a golden thing, golden ticket that they should not. They need to handle that with so much care. And I think that I think that he is one of the best things that ever happened to comics, comic movies in general. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be the fact that they have the rights. Disney has the rights to them now. Mm-hmm. Oh, they got to be so oh so careful. Make him with the respect to Stan Lee. Yes. Make him a type Stan Lee. Oh, care. like literally. There's Deadpool. He could just be drinking coffee in exactly. a coffee. Exactly. Like, there he is. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a, a nod to like Stan, like replace, I hate to say it, but like replace Deadpool with Stan Lee. And it's just like, people are going to love that. Stan Lee would like that. A hundred percent. Especially for like, uh, for them building up to the point where now he's going to be a, a central role in, in the MCU. Mm-hmm. Oh man, just clamor him in, have little cameos for him until then. Exactly. Like, exactly. It, the next Deadpool movie. And I think they might do this, man. Deadpool kills the Fox universe. Oh, dude, man, could dude. you imagine? I, I can definitely see it. I can <laughs> he just kills see it. everyone. I can definitely see him like going into these old movies like Fantastic Four and like, you know what's up? Just Tina, like... I hope they bring Cable to the oh, MCU, man. bro. Josh I, Brolin. I, I, can, I cannot wait for the X-Men to come in. Like this new revamped. Oh, man, dude, Disney, Marvel, any way that you want to put it, are set for the next 20, 30 oh, years. Oh, my God. Man. I cannot wait to come back on this podcast. 10 years down the line, talking to you. And I'd be like, bro, you remember it 10 years ago when we were talking well, about we were this. Talking about that, yeah. And now we're seeing this in a whole new light. And it's just going to be like, what is Disney now? What is Disney? Like, are they still PG? Are they G? Like, what are they? Are they rated R now? Like, it's just crazy. <laughs> and I think rated R might take a different turn. for like uh, It might be more acceptable in the future. Um, yeah, when but, censorship is shit. Like, yeah. no one's going to care about it. Um, but what I was going to say is, Deadpool and like specifically oh sorry the next big team mm-hmm. that we're all gonna love like say Guardians of the Galaxy they were the huge big team fantastic that's like four dude yes. I just went that's this the, and dude, I was just like literally yep. that's the like they're gonna be the next Guardians where everyone's gonna be like I love, love the fantastic, fantastic four. four the thing they're gonna make him a, such a lovable beast and then the Human Torch, Johnny Storm. Oh, oh my god Mr. Man. Fan- Reed Richards I oh, hope dude. he I hope some way John Krasinski well, yes, oh, but I think who? he might just end up directing. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's going to be we'll very see. interesting. Yeah. But um, I hope in the future we see Mr. Reed Richards meet Tony Stark. Like oh, somehow. Like somehow, an AI version or something. Like, oh, like, like, like an Illuminati. In, in oh, oh, dude. Illuminati <laughs> with all the six. I bring in Namor, bring in uh, Professor X, and like have like this little cameo shot yes. of like a last part of the movie, and then they just go yes. into like their own. Whoa, man. We are, we are going into... 
our next panel of like I know. Uh, like I know. Uh, we, without I the know. other we two. Should, we should Dude, <laughs> it, it's, it doesn't matter. It's just cool that like right now we have a sense of perspective of what we're talking about. It doesn't matter. I know. But so, it's so cool to fucking talk about that. During because... that podcast, I'm gonna just pitch this. What I'm gonna it? say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch it for next podcast. We are they need old Avengers. Like for instance, the Ooh. original Ant Man. Okay. Like an old version of Captain America in okay. an Else World story. Okay. Okay. Um, then you could do like uh, grungy looking. He's uh, already been scarred well, up by war and shit. Well, you could do like, like a, a Fantastic Four because my theory is is that they're going to be trapped in the quantum realm oh. from from the time of Hank Pym. Like okay. Hank Pym knew them. Yeah. And they got lost oh. in the quantum realm, and he just forgot. He just doesn't want to talk about it. Bro. Like, what if? Okay. Here, I could I could go on it. I, I know could, you I can. Could, I, could I know just, you can. Oh my god, I could go on and on. But like an old Avengers. Oh, and then uh, T'Challa's dad, T'Chaka, oh, uh, stop, being Black man. Panther, teaming up with all of them. Dude, what really fascinates me is the whole world of the Black Panther franchise with like having all these different rulers. The, there's five different tribes that can actually be a Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I would want to see the the. Um, the Shabu, like I forget the the uh, Umbaku, Umbaku, and like his uh, his clan be the the top clan, and For I like would want to see like that sort of storyline yes. go through, and how how that one can kind of like re reassemble like the sort of like clash of like the five tribes fighting against each other. I love seeing that, and so, I th- I think that's so rich. Exactly. Yes, I love the the tribal aspect oh, of the whole story yes, of Black yes, Panther. It's yes. what make it's what brings everyone in it. It's, yes. a, it's unlike any other Marvel 100%, thing. One hundred percent. And here here was my pitch before Chadwick passed. My pitch for the next Black Panther was going to be they're telling this backstory of this girl that grew up with. Uh, T'Challa, yeah, and she grew up with T'Challa, and she had weird powers, and she could manipulate the freaking weather, and they sent her the away. Storm and they being sent like her that, away, that, yes, that and she whole, comes back, and they fall in love. They fall in love, man. Dude, oh, I don't my know. Gosh. I, it, it, that would have that would have worked amazing if you know Chad was still here. And, and, yes. and, and uh, yeah, I just I, right now I think the the safest way to go is just for Jory to to pick up the mantle yeah. and uh, be the be the what, the next Black Panther, yeah. but. Oh my God, man! There's so much rich richness to all this, and it adds like you as a film guy, you as a mm-hmm. film director, and and like you can see the possibilities of how much they can go, how far they can go, how deep in depth they, they can, can go, go to far. all these tribes. They can go far. It gives the opportunity for a director mm-hmm. to see that and say, you know what, I can make this movie. 10 times better than what it actually people portray to be. Exactly. And that's what I cannot wait for. Exactly. Now, I don't I think they could even get into like ancient Egyptian stuff oh, with, with, man. Apoco- with yes, apocalypse. Yes, with apocalypse and, having and then, the four horsemen. And like Storm could be from yes. Egypt and like and yes. like they knew about Wakanda but like they just didn't mess with Bro. them like we're hitting so many. Like, <laughs> I have my Marvel encyclopedia all the way over yes. there, and I'm just waiting for all these new storylines to come up. <laughs> exactly. I'm waiting for Squirrel Girl to come out. Oh just my like, gosh! Dude, we're yes. just... dude, she might be in Ant Man three. There's like, oh, there's, dude, there's a poss- there's a like possibility. Like, everyone's talking about. It. I mean, they just cast Kang the Conqueror, yeah. Yeah, 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 and like Young Avengers. So why not throw yeah. Squirrel Girl in yeah. there, dude? Yeah. Just like... Oh, dude. <laughs> it's just it. it ba- Zach Efron needs to be Human Torch. I think yes. Johnny Storm. He, he needs to be. He needs to be the next Johnny Storm. I, I think he has a charisma. I love Zach Efron. Like that dude is phenomenal. Oh, but, funny guy. Yes, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Like he has that whole like. Let me get that. Let me let me let me get like Johnny Storm at in here. Just yeah. get that whole attitude. And just put it on him, and it's just that that would work. Uh, I'm just saying, there's so much room for all these different new characters that is going to bring the light to all of these new actresses and actors that are going to come in and they're going to be like, I'm going to take up that mantle. And, you know, here's the thing. And I'm going to chime on this a little bit because we were two hours in, bro. You uh, realize that? Geez. Yeah, bro, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, I love it. It's more content for me. I can use it, especially because now I'm going to put it on Instagram and stuff. It's going to be great. Hell yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, uh, what I'm saying is that now it, I'm getting to the realm that I love – Marvel ten times more than I ever loved DC. I'm a fanboy of Marvel of comics. I love DC comics, but here's the thing: uh, I the the idea of how far Marvel has gone and dwar- like they they just like enamored everybody's imagination with what we have now for the last ten years. It's hard. It's hard for for DC to kind of come up. And I and I hate saying that, but like the superheroes, no matter if they're strong, if they're not as strong as the DC ones, it doesn't matter. 
the richness in the storylines and how far they can go gives Marvel and Disney the upper edge. Well, can I just say this? Sure. You can say whatever they, you want. Uh, <laughs> We've been talking about superheroes for a while, but I love it, dude. It's about I, 20 I minutes, bro. Dude, I, know, I, I know. could literally talk about it all day. I think, okay, Marvel will always, like you said, always have the upper hand. We will always love those stories. They, they did it. They already did it. They, they, did they it, won. Yeah. They already they, got the they, gold trophy. They're standing they, on the podium. Climactic. They, yeah, they, they already won the balloons, confetti, everything. Wow. Yeah, so we're still going to love Marvel. I will always love Marvel, 100%. right? 100%. But I think in the next 10 years, it might be DC's you time think, to shine, dude. You have, you seen, have you seen Birds of Prey? I didn't like Birds of Prey. Really? I didn't, oh, man. really? I didn't. I, see, I thought it was very interesting. Whoa, we can talk about. I'm gonna write that down. I, I thought it was that. very interesting, dude. And <sighs> the flash okay. points coming up, man. Wait, the flash points coming up. Okay, so what's the point you're trying to get? My to? point is, is with Birds of Prey, that made me. I've heard a lot of good and bad things about it. That made me like Harley Quinn as a character even more because the first Ooh, in Suicide okay. Squad, she's a little bit annoying. She was kind of like, eh, whatever. Yeah. She was fun, and Margot Robbie's a phenomenal actress. I love Margot Robbie she's as great. Harley Quinn. And that movie, she produced it, by the way. I don't know if you, you probably knew that. <laughs> yes. Yes, and she produced it, and she loves that character so much. That's why she produced it. She's mm-hmm. like, I'm tired of being jumbled up with all this shit with like the Justice League and all that. She's like, I'm tired of being with all this negative stuff. I'm going to produce my own movie. Yes. She did Birds of Prey. Yes. I liked it. I thought she was a very lovable character. I thought some of the other characters were very lovable. Black Mask, dude, he was so good. I agree with you there. I, I'm, I'm looking at... I'm, see, I, I, I love Harley Quinn. I love Margot Robbie as being a Harley Quinn. I, there's other things about that movie where I was just like... Not a repetitiveness. It was definitely a step up to what we saw previously. Yeah. Not saying that it's 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 like ah oh, we can't wait for the next thing. Did you see the trailers for Suicide Squad too? And or? that's the thing. I I'm I'm, I, and I shouldn't do this because now this is a blind eye. I like to how I see like I had. It's giving me that okay okay we'll see how it goes. I need to see like I saw what they did with Birds of Prey. Perfect. It was it was great, but. Is that got me hyped first? The Suicide Squad too. Exactly. I'm not gonna put all my money in that say and say that that is what I'm gonna die for. Oh, if no. that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Okay, because so because of the uh, non-successful shit that we had. Oh yeah. So let me bring it back. So Birds of Prey in mind success. Okay. Yes. Suicide Squad two in my mind is gonna be blow people away. I 100%. think it's gonna be great. But yes. that, like you said, it's not gonna carry DCEU forward. Yes. What is going to carry DCEU forward is the Flash. He is already merged with the successful the already successful tv, TV show series. so he's already merged with them okay he's already brought that in so the dceu is already becoming massive okay. because now you have all, all the these flash, different ones you have the uh, green arrow yes you have all the you have the uh, uh i loved green arrow by the way green arrow yeah. was an amazing series i loved him as a character there there was so much depth to him keep going so, okay so now you have that entire tv universe to play with okay to bring into future movies sure which i'm sure they will yeah and then you have Flashpoint, and you know about Flashpoint. If you've seen, Michael Keaton recently confirmed he's going to be in Flashpoint. Not only that, Ben Affleck is going to come be back oh. for Flashpoint. So not only that, is you're going to get all these wonderful characters. And that we know and love. That we know and love, and you're going to get the timeline. They're gonna the, That movie's going to be like, listen. We're setting this shit straight. Like, sit down and watch this movie. We're going to If they've been Christian your, Bill, I'm in. They might, dude. I, like if, they, if the way talks, it's going, I agree. I'm not saying, but I mean the way it's going. Whoa. And Wonder Woman looks good. Like the new Wonder Woman looks I pretty love, good. I love Wonder Woman. Yeah, uh, that it, that's in its own thing. And it, it, even Aquaman, like I I loved it, <laughs> it but it, it, it was stale. It was so stale. It was a little and, stale. And, but the thing is, I think Wonder Woman they can't mess up just because of this idea of like, um, well, with her being this icon for women, I, they can't mess it up, man. Like, they mm-hmm. mess it up with Captain Marvel. I'm sorry yeah. to say that, but I, it's just they dropped the ball on I it. I kind of like Captain Marvel. I, I, but it wasn't the best. It I, wasn't I, the best. I, I could have done better. Black Widow hundred percent. Black but, Widow. Yes. And I cannot wait for that. And I want to I want to put that up there with my the, the top ten, five movies that I love with uh, Mar- oh with gosh, Marvel. Yeah. If, if Black Widow hits it out of the ballpark, man, I cannot yes. wait to see what else they do. With, with the it. guy from Stranger Things, what's oh, his name? Dude, uh, um... um the cop. Yeah, Hopper. Hopper. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember well, the Hopper. actor's name, but yeah, Hopper, dude, he looks at his character is phenomenal. Yes. Do you even know much about that character? Yes, yes. yes. I, I love him. I, 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 ended up, I love them in the second season, the third season, just top icing on like, the cake. And here, the way I look at Black Widow is it's going to be the building blocks for 
X Men and the building blocks for Fantastic Ooh, that's Four. That's a good. That's like a, there, that's a weird point. There yeah. might be a mutant in in, there? in uh, Black Widow. Like, have you ever heard of? Uh, have you ever heard of the? Uh, they say enhanced people, like in the in well, the they, MCU. They can say mutants now. They can now. say now. now they, they can, can say mutants. mutants. And um, uh, th- there's a bear. Uh, well, I can't think of the bear's name. Sasquatch. No, the, there's uh, a huge bear. Um, and he was like basically. So when you had the Captain America, you had like the um, weapon one, two. He was yes. weapon one, and then X-Men. okay, so he was Canadian. It was an Alpha Flight then. He was in the Alpha Flight. Uh, so th- this specific group? person is basically the Russia's attempt. Same with Red Guardian, Russia's attempt to create the Captain, the Captain America serum, the Super Soldier serum. Yes. But they thought, you know, Russia being Russian, Russian they thought like, let's add him, a, a, let's make him half bear. Uh, Ursa Rescue. Major, Ursa Major's his name. Ursa Major, Ursa Look Major. Him up. Yeah. Okay. Half bear, half human hybrid, Ooh. Super Soldier mutant. Oh, I could be wrong about this. I don't know much about him, but he mm. could be in the movie first mutant in the MCU, unless okay. you count Scarlet Witch. Okay, let me give you another one. I like that one. Uh, let's say we do get Fantastic Four. Uh, we get Fantastic Four in the next two years. Okay. Uh, twenty twenty two comes around. I don't think. I don't think they're gonna. Tr- I don't think they're gonna try to touch on Fant- on uh, X Men until like twenty twenty five yeah. later. Yeah. And the reason I say that they want to bring the cosmic realm. They want to look. They want to make a Fantastic Four a beloved character. What's gonna end up having or beloved characters in the in the franchise? Yeah, beloved franchise. What I think is gonna happen is I think that they're gonna end up bringing or having a child. Franklin Richards is a mutant. They just cast Kang the Conqueror. Yeah, they did. I dude, I'm just saying like there's so much possibilities of how the mutants are gonna be portrayed. Um, but I think they want to they want to capture all the richness with the past. Like Eternals is, has to do with the past, the present, and the future, okay. and how we see reality in that sort of way. And I think they want to they want to settle on that first, and they want to like bring that to light. I just realized just now that you said that uh, that it is going to be a story with past, present, future. Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. I, I, now, now I'm kind of thinking about it. And I'm like, yeah. That's true. Also, I just think they just want to like. And enhance it, for, especially for Disney, like how they want to put. A, they're probably gonna make a fucking MCU park in the next twenty oh, years. They, bro. They're, they're think, dude, Disney the just, fifth gate, dude. I, I'm not even joking. I'm, there's rumors Disney just brought bought more property in Orlando. Oh yeah, to, no, to, th- that's. To build. I think that's a real rumor. That's I, a real thing. I, I follow Same with this, Universal. I follow like all these different people. Like Mickey Views is a big one. Like he lives here. And he's just talking about like Disney acquired so much of the real estate, and he's like, "What are they going to do with that real estate?" Bro, I'm going to predict the future right now, and uh, sometimes I'm spot on, sometimes I'm not. Five years, say goodbye to the Marvel and Islands of Adventure, bro. Mm. It's going away. It is going away. I those, will miss it so I miss, much. I'm going to miss those. Suits, those are the bro. best comic Costumes. book store. Those are the best comic book stores in Orlando. Yeah. No joke. Have yeah. you been in them? Yeah, I have. They're I so good. Um, but going back, the first mutants we are technically going to see in the MCU is uh, Wiccan and Speed in WandaVision. Oh, okay. So Confer- that, makes, that makes sense. Confirmed. Confirmed. That makes sense. That might happen. They're saying they were originally going to happen before 2020 is over. Yeah. But now they're saying that, that Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to come out first. Yes. Then WandaVision in early 2021. Then the what if. So yeah. like around what if might come first and then WandaVision, but roughly in the early years of year of 2021 mm. is when we're going to get WandaVision. Okay. It's going to be phenomenal. Phenomenal. Get I agree. Fe- Mephisto. Oh, Evan dude, Peter, I love Evan Me- Peters. At that point, that's where they have to bring the supernatural in. And that's where they have to bring <laughs> it. Devil. I think that's a great way to bring in, uh, like, cause Mephisto is straight into ghost Rider, And I think that's yeah. the way, that's the way I think if they're going to go into that, they're going to hit so many, uh, not roadblocks. I think they're going to hit so many other things like uh, bring in a uh, vampire supernatural type of shit. And so like, I cannot wait, man. I just think the richness in all these different characters and how all these new actors are going to bring in this, these, I don't know who the, the if, if uh, what's his name? Who paid um, uh, vampire slayer? What's his name? Uh, oh, uh, oh, blade blade. Oh, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, <sighs> It's Mahershala Ali Snipes. is a, is a, Snipes. Yeah, Snipes. Wesley Snipes. Snipes. Wesley Snipes. Yeah, if, Mahershala Ali is going to be the new one. Mahershala? Yeah. I love Mahershala. Did you know that? No, I yeah, didn't know he, that. He's the new Blade. Stop it, man. That's going to be so dude, good. He, he, he came up to Kevin Feige and he's like, I, I want to be Blade. And he's like, yes. Deal. He's like, he's like yes. deal. <laughs> dude, Mahershala is one of my favorite actors in the in in the franchise right dude, now. He's I great. Just, I loved him. I loved him. I loved him in Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. I loved him in almost every other movie that I've seen with him. Yeah, he was in Luke Cage, wasn't yes, he? Yes, he was. He, he was, was a bad guy. Wasn't he, he was a bad he was guy. Good. He he got killed, but I just think it's so 
Rich, I just think he, he he's just oh he has okay. that finesse. Who do you think? Um, going back to throwback to Peaky Blinders we were talking about earlier. Who do you think Killian Murphy's gonna Bro, play? Bro, I'm three episodes in. Let, let me let me rephrase that. Okay. Uh, you know the actor though. He played yes. Scarecrow in Batman yes. Begins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do you think he's gonna play? <sighs> oh, actually, better yet. Keanu Reeves. Let's just talk about that. Is he going to play Adam Warlock or Silver Surfer? Like, it's got to be one of the two, right? He's man. Okay, so the way I, what I, I go off, of, I love Silver Surfer in the comics. He's one of my favorite characters. One of the uh, one of the best that has like a lot of character depth. We know a love to the point where we feel this whole anti heroism in him, but we know we feel for that character, and because of that, he's got empathy. Yes, and I don't know, I don't know if Keanu Reeves would be end up being him. He's probably going to be more of the leadership role. He's going to be more of the Adam Warlock role. The role, Adam of, Warlock. yeah, I could see, so I, I could see him more as Adam Warlock than I could see him as a Silver. Sur- I think Silver Surfer is going to be more of a subtlety actor. And he's going to play Doctor Doom then. Oh. Dude, D- Doctor Doom is going to be more vicious. Um, Probably not well known. No. Uh, oh God, man, this is so that hard. Is this is a hard one, dude. This, make, is, this is really grinding one. my gears. I know that's for a hard all one. of my audience out there. Uh, this is probably one of the best podcasts I've had uh, in a long oh, time. Thank you, <laughs> dude. No, we are two two hours and twenty minutes in, man. What I'm going to do. We're gonna we're gonna end it here. You're definitely gonna come back on 100. Sure. percent Not even just for the panel. We're just gonna be talking about a lot of stuff. Uh, this gives me a lot of great content. I I don't care. You're a great person to come on. Thank you, man. Uh, I do have another podcast here in about another okay. two hours. Yeah. I knew we were like, running. I mean, yeah, we were running like, out of time. But Shit. I love oh I love God, I, I know I love that we we can talk about this so much. We can talk about a lot of this stuff. And for me, it doesn't matter how long it takes. But this is going to go into a lot of other avenues to what I have continuing with the slice of life podcast, because the slice of life is going to go into entertainment, the life of entertainment, the life of entertainers, the life of every sort of aspect of entertainment. And that's where we're going to see Mitchell may come back for those episodes. We definitely need to, Dude, definitely need to come back. I'm thanks excited. for coming on, man. This Thank is going to, so this is going to conclude this episode with you, Mitchell may as being the, actual guest for this episode so this I'm, is this is awesome i'm really excited for the big panel of the superhero talk well, yes. i feel like we're gonna get heated no that's the reason you why said I DJ's love it. gonna be here yeah DJ, oh, dude yeah i know gonna get heated <laughs> yeah but i mentioned you you and chase he's like oh, dude this is what i was clamoring for for the longest time I'm like yes i know man i was clamoring for this too I will, uh, disclaimer i i am not good with much anime stuff so i can't really get into yeah. like the they they i i i have some referencing it with that. I do too. Yes. Naruto and Dragon Ball Z, but that's about as far as it goes. We, we do. We will talk about this more off podcast. <laughs> um, for the, for my viewers out there that are just listening, uh, just a pure podcast. Thank you for tuning in for all of my video people there. I do apologize for the video content right now, guys. We did get a lot of great content. I'm going to splice it in any way I can bring in some more videos, put it on social media Mitch, where can everybody find you, man? Uh, just to kind of like end it right there. Uh, so Social have, media, everything. Uh, Instagram, if you're a Disney fan at all, I have uh, Mitchell.mouse, which is on Instagram. Um, and I mean, that's pretty much like the only thing I do. YouTube is uh, Mitchell May, just my name. It's kind of hard to find. Um, you're better off looking up like Chon, uh, Tron con- Roller Coaster Construction because that's my most popular video. So I'm kind of hard to find on YouTube, but it's Mitchell May. It's just my name. I'll put a link below. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. I've dude, had so much fun. Dude, we can talk for we, hours, Yes, man. we can. <laughs> uh, you're a great person to have on. Thanks for coming on, man. For, for those of y'all just tuning in, this is the new podcast, the Slice of Life podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go in depth to every aspect of life. It doesn't matter what it is. As you can tell with this podcast, we got into so many aspects Dude, of life. So much. So much. And in a matter of two hours, which is not enough, believe it or not. <laughs> two hours and it's almost 20, 30 minutes right here, guys. And we still have a lot to talk about. Tune in later on, guys. Thank you. We're going to call you it so quits much. right now, guys.